games. Liam Folks has played well. Cliff Watson has played well. You've really gotten a lot of help from Rockford this season, and we talk about that relationship being really important. But uh, and, and you look at Chad Yetman, your leading scorer, is another uh, player from the organization. How important is that for uh, is that relationship with Rockford not just for this team's success, but also as you develop players to prepare to play at the next level? Well, it's it's vital. They are young players. They're going to grow. They're going to develop. Um, you know, you look at Yetman and McKay, they're totally different players from where they were last year. Um, you look at um, the guys that have been able to step up for us, whether it's Ben Legurier or um, Cliff Watson. You know, those are key players for us on the blue line. Um, we need guys to be able to step into roles and do those jobs and do it effectively. And obviously, Liam Polk says that as well. So for us as a group, uh, we, we rely on those guys. Uh, they're good people. They work hard. They want to get better. And we want to do everything we can to help. Uh... You've gotten a lot of production from your defense this season. Uh, when you've been playing well, especially Cliff Watson scores the goal as the trailer on Wednesday night uh, on a rush. How important is it to your whole game for – your defensemen, especially the caliber of offensive defensemen you have to contribute in the scoring column? Well, we need it um, because right now, uh, although we have guys who have consistently been able to put the puck in the net, um, we need guys to be able to step up and, and, and to create plays. And, you know, the case of Kale Howarth uh, making that pass back to Cliff, you know, 13 minutes into the first period, we're up 1-0 and we're able to ride that the rest of the night. Um, that's not always going to happen, but we want our D to be active. Uh, that's been no different this year than it's been in previous years. Um, Keone's had a nice start. Mike Lee's had a nice start offensively. Um, we need those guys to continue to contribute um, into our offensive success. You've seen Wheeling once this season a week and a half ago. What are your impressions of them? I was really impressed with them. I thought they were extremely hardworking. Um, you know, we talked about the fact that um, – we had only given up five offense or D zone coverage goals the whole season. And, and now that stays true in 10 games. However, three of them were against Wheeling that night. So we need to shore up our D zone. But a lot of that has to do with how they play offense, how they attack. Um, we're going to have to get pins. We're going to have to defend. And if we can do that, we'll have success, especially on the counterattack, uh, just like we did against them last time. Uh, but I, I do expect them to be a really good opponent, uh, a hardworking opponent. Um, that's got a lot of guys who can score goals and create. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time. It's Indy Fuel head coach Doug Christensen, prior to tonight's game against the Wheeling Nailers, we'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda Furr, Physician Executive for Primary Care at Community Health Network. When you need care, nothing should get in the way. No barriers or hoops to jump through, just an easy way to get the support you need, however it's best for you. Which is why we offer tried and true points of access, like your primary care physician or your local med check for urgent care and community clinics at Walgreens throughout central Indiana. But we're also adding new ways to get exceptional care, like improved tools in MyChart to connect you with your provider, increased virtual appointments in primary care, urgent care, and even specialty care. We're also expanding virtual access for your behavioral health needs, both for counseling and psychiatry. At Community, you'll always get the best care possible, no matter how you choose to access it. Community Health Network, exceptional care, simply delivered. Visit us at ecommunity.com slash get care. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Getting set for the face-off of tonight's game between the Indy Fuel and the Wheeling Nailers, along with Nick Olchek. I'm Andrew Smith. It's time for tonight's Keys to the Game, presented by Shelbourne Knee Center, and here's Nick. Well, Andrew, it's going to be a battle tonight. The Wheeling Nailers with five wins this year, four by one goal. This is a team they play a tight style. They're going to be aggressive. they got Patrick Watling who's leading their team with a bunch of points, and I, I think coming into this game, you got to be as supportive as you can to the goaltender, Cale Morris. He's coming off of his first professional shutout. It's imperative that the fuel defensemen come back, help out, clear those loose pucks. Don't force him to have to make a second, a third, and a fourth save. Same goes for the center iceman as well. If they can support their goaltender, block some shots, it's going to make his life a little bit more easy throughout the game. 
Those are our keys to the game, presented by Shelbourne Knee Center. At Shelbourne Knee Center, we focus only on knees because specializing enables us to find better ways to get you off the sidelines and back to living, working, and playing the way you want. Our outcomes-based treatment strategies come from 38-plus years of research and follow up with our patients. To find out more about Shelbourne Knee Center or to schedule your appointment, call 888-FIX-KNEE or visit fixknee.com. Let's take a break. Come back with a face-off right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Hundreds of certified pre-owned Hondas are in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Like new Hondas for a fraction of the cost. Save thousands with 0.99% financing on certified pre-owned Accords, Civics, CRVs, and Pilots. And get a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty, 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. Search your local Honda dealer now. Proof tier 1 through 3 credit, 17 to 21 models. See dealer for financing details. Offer ends 1322. If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. Back to the action with Nick Golchek and Andrew Smith with Indy Fuel Hockey. The Shades of Blue show choir from Whiteland High School bringing us our national anthem this evening, which means it's time to uh, drop the puck on this contest. Starting lineups for tonight's game for the Wheeling Nailers. Old friend Nick Hutchison up front, Matt Alfaro and Patrick Watling, the center and right wing. The defense pairing will be Adam Smith and Matt Foley. And in goal, Alex Dorio, Pittsburgh Penguins contracted goalies, won both of his starts, 3.66 goals against average on the year. For the fuel, Tommy Apap will be in between Seamus Malone and Liam Fultz on D, Cliff Watson and Mike Lee. And the goaltender is Keel Morris, who is 2-3-1 with a 2.64 goals against average and a 903 save percentage. Our referee tonight is Jacob Rakucki. The linesmen are Trevor Waite and Brian Gorkoff. The Fuel in their red sweaters this evening with white and black trim. And the black on the trim has a little bit of a subtle checkered flag pattern with black and gray checks. And then the same pattern on the socks, red and black. The Nailers, the affiliate of the Pittsburgh Penguins. White uniforms with the Nailers logo across the front and black and gold. Black numbers, black shoulders, black pants, white socks. The fuel move from left to right, or from right to left, excuse me, as you picture this rink in your mind's eye. The puck is down, and away we go. On this Friday night in Indy, between the Indy Fuel and Wheeling Nailers. The puck's in into the Indy end. Cliff Watson will wrap it around. Seamus Malone waits on it along the near boards. Puck took a a little while to get to him, and he had to come back for it. Sends it around the carousel to Mike Lee. It's poked off of his stick, but Lee's able to jam it up to the line, but not out. Alfaro holds it in, chops it into the left-wing corner for Watling. He'll bring it out along the boards, leave it for the D, a rink-wide pass looking for Hutchison, heeled off of his stick. Foley pinches down to keep it alive in the right corner. 
Up top for Adam Smith. Sends one low for Watling. He'll track it down below the goal line. Cliff Watson ties him up. Alfaro digs it free. It's bunted out to Foley. Top of the right wing circle. He fires, but a diving shot block made by Seamus Malone. Hutchison can't quite handle the pass. The fuel will get to it and spray it back into the wheeling end. It will not have enough steam for icing, however, and the fuel will get a much-needed change. Oh, two great defensive zone plays from Seamus Malone. First, as the weak side winger came back to help out, deny that cross scene play from Nick Hutchison, looking for a fellow teammate across the way, and then a little bit out of position, but he came out charging, couple of hard strides, came diving across to Seamus Malone. A great start in his own zone from the fuel left winger. And the fuel structure in the neutral zone forces an icing as an errant pass goes all the way down. So Indy will get an offensive zone draw just a minute 15 into this game. Jared Thomas to take it. And he wins it. Back to Schneider at the left point. He'll cycle it in behind the net looking for Spencer Watson. Pops out the left side. Feeds Gates in the high slot. Had to kick it to the stick. And that allowed Doherty to come over and block the shot. And the puck punched back to the fuel line. Texera wands it over to Schneider along the left wing boards. He'll send it in to the wheeling end. Coming back for it is Chris Ortiz, who is playing his first game with the Nailers since the end of October after spending some time with Wilkes-Barre Scranton of the American Hockey League. Pucks it into the fuel zone, a little too far for Doherty of wheeling. And Texera tries to head man to Gates, pass doesn't connect. And the errant pass from the fuel blue line all the way down will be an icing. So an offensive zone draw coming for Wheeling with 18.06 to go on a scoreless first. Yeah, one of those passes that just goes right in between two guys, Gates and Watson in the area. And I think you're right, Andrew. I think Keone Texture was trying to send that onto the stick of Gates. He just kind of turned away at the last second. Spencer was looking for it, but by the time the puck came to him, it was behind. The puck goes down for icing, and now a draw to the left of Kale Morris. Jared Thomas to take the draw against Tyler Drevich. This is an all right-handed line for Wheeling with Drevich, Hausinger, and Hampton. The Fuel win the draw and ice the puck again. So this group with Jared Thomas, Brent Gates, and Spencer Watson will remain on the ice for the Fuel. Gates, Thomas, Watson, Malone, Apap, Folks, McKay, Lacroix, Yetman, the forward line, C.J. Ike, the 10th forward for the Fuel. Cliff Watson and Lee, Schneider and Teixeira, Adam Parcells making his Fuel debut, and Jacob Laguerre, the defense pairings for Indy. Fuel finally control off the draw after it was pinned against the boards. Texera sends it back into the wheeling zone, and we've got icing number three. Only the third time's the charm for the <laughs> defensive zone draw for the Fuel is at least Thomas and these guys are getting a little bit of rest. Yeah, and getting a little work on the faceoff routines as well, Andrew, but I've loved how the Fuel teammates, the wingers, the defensemen have come in and help out on these draws. Go back two faceoffs ago. Puck was laying there. Jordan Schneider came in to pull it back for the Indy Fuel. So just a little bit uh, too inaccurate with the passes, but they're able to win it and get it out now. But I just love to see that help from everybody on the faceoff. Brent Gates poke checked at center. Matt Alfaro shoots wide from the top of the right wing circle. Carry him off the inboards. Parcells tried to play it forward, and it was taken away by Wheeling. Sent goalward, but intercepted by the fuel. Chad Getman comes back to get the puck in his own zone. Sends it across for Parcells, making his fuel debut. Turns it over below the goal line, and Matt Alfaro punishes the fuel as Nick Hutchison dug the puck free, fed Alfaro out in front. He was able to beat Morris on the glove side. Wheeling takes an early 1-0 lead, two minutes and 40 seconds into the game. Oh, it's just a tough play for Adam Parcells. Trying to make a play in his own zone. He's in the far corner to the right of Kale Morris and tries to make a D to D pass along the boards and he just flat out whips on the puck. It lays there and a great pass from below the goal line out front as Alfaro was there all alone. And an unintended mistake from Parcells leads to a goal for Wheeling, and they're on the board less than three minutes in. It's Ben Alfaro's first goal of the season, his seventh point. Nick Hutchison with the assist. He now has a five-game scoring streak. And always feels good when you score as a visitor in a barn where you had played previously. And this, too, is a case where the, the Fuel have now iced the puck four times as they ice it again. That does two things. Number one, it makes you have to defend a lot in your new, in your defensive zone. But number two, 
it lets the other team dictate the matchups. Absolutely, and they can now run a face-off play if they're able to win the draw. They get some perpetual and sustained offensive zone time. And that really has been the case so far in the early going as Wheeling, for the most part, has taken advantage of a lot of these turnovers for the, for the fuel in their own zone. Naylor's with possession of the offensive zone. Foley shoots. It's deflected on goal by Cockrell. A good positional save made by Kale Morris. The fuel springing out of the zone. Ood sends it off the boards for Doherty for Wheeling, and he'll bring it up. Cockrell into the fuel zone up the left wing boards. Dips the shoulder. Laguerrier cuts him off. Cockrell turns back. Feeds McPherson coming right down Main Street, and he misses high from inside of the right wing circle. Wheeling pouring it on here early. Liam Folks hops on a puck in the defensive zone. Cliff Watson's able to send it back to the Nailers line. one nothing. Wheeling. The first three minutes and 50 seconds of this game have played almost exclusively in the fuel end. And that last chance, the fuel got really lucky, Andrew. It was a great play from Cockrell sneaking in that back door, and it was Cedric Lacroix who was in the high slot. It was his role to try and defend that cross-seam play. He didn't. Had no idea where Cockrell was, and he just missed the net wide. As it looked like Kale Morris was just a little bit off of his angle. Like I said, it's a good thing that puck went wide because there was plenty of net on the far side. And the fuel iced the puck again. Seamus Malone was trying to backhand it into the zone for Liam Folks, but did so from the wrong side of the red line. Five icings already on the fuel. Four minutes and 17 seconds into the game. and Essentially negating the last change advantage you get at home as Wheeling's been able to toss the guys they want out for the offensive zone draws and set the matchups. Alfaro has the game's only goal, facing off against APAP, who is warned for a false start. And the faceoff won by the Nailers. Up to the point, it comes to Stevens. He'll wrist one goalward high and wide. It settles down to Mike Lee, banks it up the far boards, but Victor holds it in. It's poked off of his stick by Tommy Apap all the way back into the wheeling in. The fuel will go for a change as Apap heads in on the forecheck. Pucks it over to the near boards. Nick Hutchison for a wheeling ahead to Al Farrell. Right wing circle. Dips the shoulder. Goes to goal. Morris with the save, and he got the rebound as well on Watling. Brent Gates able to force the puck out to center. Rink wide pass to Thomas into the wheeling zone. Spencer Watson shoots a soft shot on goal. Dorio saw it all the way and gloves it and gets a whistle. 15.08 to go first period. The Fuel trailing one to nothing. A soft shot indeed, but the Fuel will have an offensive zone draw, and now they'll be able to try and win this draw and determine what happens after. We'll see if they can try and run a play, but it starts with one, and I'd like to see Spencer Watson just slinging that puck towards the net, giving the Fuel some offensive zone time. Wheeling wins the defensive zone draw. Cockrell brings it into the fuel zone along the right wing boards. Puts on the brakes. Sends it back for Foley who fires a tricky wrister. Morris looked like he might have been fooled on that, but he came across made a glove save. Another shot from the neutral zone. Gloved down by Morris. The fuel with the stretch pass into the wheeling zone. Jared Thomas hops on it in the left wing corner. Smith tries to beat him to the puck. Gates sends it a little further along. Comes out to the point for Teixeira for a deflection from Gates. He scores! Brent Gates with an absolutely perfect deflection on the point shot from Keone Teixeira. And the Fuel have tied this up 1-1, one one, working the puck from low to high, getting the point shot. And then Gates with a perfect stick. And for Brent Gates, that's goal number five on the season. And point number nine for Gates as the Fuel are able to win a battle in the near side corner. And Brent Gates works himself from the corner to the net front. That's where the whole play happens, Andrew. He doesn't stay to the outside. He's got a wheeling nailer to his backside. Able to get open, present his stick. He only takes sure with his head up, finds the stick. And I love the little maneuver that Brent Gates does. Just opens up the blade, allows the puck to act like a ramp. And it goes right over the short side, side, side shoulder of Alex Dorio. A big time response for the fuel with a goal completely against the run of play. Lone assist to Keone Teixeira at 520. Brent Gates is fifth of the year. Ties this one up at one. And the fuel ice the puck again as we're back to action. That's six. Normally we don't count the icings, but we're less than six minutes into this game. And uh, 
that is a little bit of the pressure that Wheeling is yeah. putting on. A little bit of it is just simply not being able to make plays coming out of your zone. Yeah, and I think sometimes we've seen in this period so far in the first odd, six odd minutes is that the fuel forwards maybe have been a little bit too far up ice, Andrew, forcing too far of a pass. So if that's the case, the forwards got to come back low. they got to come back much deeper to make a much longer pass, a more shorter pass to then allow the fuel to be able to get out of their own zone because right now on their own end, they've been really suspect. Hutchison tries a wraparound off the faceoff. Morris holds the near side post. The fuel clearing out to center as far as the wheeling line where McPherson settles it down, and he'll fire it into the fuel zone and ice the puck as Cliff Watson wins the race to the dots. So an offensive zone draw coming for the fuel. That's at least the second wheeling icing. Kind of a choppy start to this game with a lot of icings, and I think part of that, too, we're now... For Indy, 11 games into the season. For Wheeling, 10. You're still a little early and still yeah. getting the timing down a little bit. Yeah, and I think maybe by the second period, Andrew, we might need to send a couple of new whistles down for, down for the <laughs> linesmen because they've just been blowing those things like nonstop. But in games like this where there's a lot of whistles, a lot of icings, that's where faceoffs become super important. And a guy like Tommy Apap who's getting ready to take this draw, you can win the majority of them. You're going to be able to try and create some offense off of some faceoffs in Wheeling zone. Face off one cleanly back to Laguerrier. Center point. Tried to let the traffic set up, and his wrist shot hit the traffic. Watling with a the block, then Watling forces the turnover. A quick feed across to Hutchison, but a good stick coming back by Parcells. Broke up a quickly developing two on one. The fuel with transition the other way into the wheeling zone. Shot from Parcells is deflected up and over the net. Schneider holds it in at the point in behind the net. It comes. Gates tries to play it out in front but it's picked off by Hutchison wheeling with numbers the other way. Three on three across the line. Hutchison sends it in. Morris sticks it to the corner where Teixeira hops on it for the fuel. Bring it up the far side through the neutral zone across the wheeling line. Over to Folks, left circle, dips the shoulder, tried to back in a goal run. It ended up getting in on Dorio on second effort, but he was able to stop the sharp angle shot. Ood the other way for wheeling. Fires fought off by Morris on the shot from the right wing faceoff dot. Schneider headmans to center. Jared Thomas gains the wheeling line, dumps it in. Brent Gates goes after it. Ood gets there first for wheeling up the far boards for Doherty, and he's able to spray it out to center. Foley ahead to Cockrell, right wing boards across the fuel line. Takes a big hit from Cliff Watson, but stays on the puck. A good stick from Spencer Watson, however, forces it out to center. Thomas sweeps it to the wheeling line, but it's picked off by Cockrell. Three on three, the Nailers come across the fuel line. Cockrell's shot is blocked by Mike Lee, up and out of play. And we have a whistle with 12.34 to go in the first period. Brent Gates has scored for the fuel. Matt Alfaro for Wheeling. We're tied at one. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Midwest Sport and Spine is the official chiropractor of the Indy Fuel. Go where the fuel go for sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Midwest Sport and Spine offers state-of-the-art technology, chiropractic, physical therapy, athletic training, and massage therapy all under one roof. And yes, we take your insurance. Take advantage of our Fuel Fan discount for a $59 introductory massage offer. Midwest Sport and Spine, sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Go to MidwestSportAndSpineCenter.com to schedule your appointment now. Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBEW Local 481 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. There's more than one way to watch today's event. Flow Hockey has got you covered. Go to flowhockey.tv, download the Flow Sports app on Roku, Apple TV 4, Amazon Fire TV, or you can download the Flow Sports app on your iOS and Android devices to catch all of the action and archived footage. He's Nick Olchek. I'm Andrew Smith. The Indy Fuel and Wheeling Nailers tied at 1. 12 and a half minutes to go in the first period. The Fuel with possession in their own zone. Riley McKay tries to send it ahead to Central Lacroix. He hops on it off the boards in the Wheeling zone. Backhands it toward goal where Dorio stops it with the stick and covers with the right hand. The rare right catching goalie is Dorio. Second year guy or third year guy actually contracted to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, presents a little bit of a different look for right-handed players. A lot of right-handed guys like to go to that high-glove shot. It's skating into their uh, strong side, and 
I think even more importantly for left-handed shooters, a lot of the left-handed players like to go forehand, backhand, five-hole. It's going kind of away from the goaltender's stick. In this case, you're kind of going into it, so it's just a different look. I don't think it changes a ton, Andrew, but just certainly something that uh, might throw some guys off, but that is certainly part of the, pre, the pre-scout and the prep that these players watch when they're going into these games against some goaltenders that catch maybe with the hand that they don't usually see. Fuel play it into the wheeling end. And Ortiz and McPherson lose the puck. Sent up to the point for Laguerrier. Across to Parcells. Left point. Wrists one blocked into the left wing corner and out of play by Bobby Hampton. It's the first time we've seen Adam Parcells this season. He was acquired right at the start of the regular season and then immediately called up to the San Jose Barracuda of the American Hockey League. Played a couple of games for them. Returned last week. Rookie from Wisconsin Eau Claire where he played for four seasons played a couple of games for the Utah Grizzlies last year as well and he adds a little bit of size to the back end and just by a little bit I mean about six foot six almost 200 pounds and yeah I mean a tough turnover for him on the first goal against but I thought, thought he's rebounded with a couple of good plays and turned the puck over a couple of shifts ago in the neutral zone but made a real good back checking play to come back and prevent a further opportunity for wheeling so a little bit of a tough start for everybody for the fuel, but I'd like to rebound it and shifts uh, past that original goal against from Parcells. And when you're 6'6", six, six, you've got such a long reach in the defensive zone. He did a nice job breaking up a wheeling rush because of that reach. Nailers with the puck in their own zone. 11-14 to go, 1-1. We're tied the first period. They send it in, but the pass a little too far for Hutchison. It's collected by Laguerrier. And Parcells will settle it down for Indy. Headman it up the left wing boards to Lacroix. He'll tip it into the wheeling end. Riley McKay going after it with Adam Smith. It squirts to Lacroix in the left wing corner. Sends it up to the point for Schneider. Wrist one goal word, and it's gobbled up by Dorio. And he holds on for a whistle with 10.54 to go in a first period that's tied at one. Well, that's a play that's worked, Andrew. We saw the first fuel goal by Brent Gates. Work it low, gain control, and then send it back to the point. And you got about three guys flying towards the net looking for redirects looking for loose rebounds and again another example of it there the fuel in the near side corner back to the d and everybody floating uh, and flooding towards the net so that's been a real key to success here early in the game and obviously the fuel with a goal with it already and another close chance jordan schneider just lit somebody up it was cockerel at the line wheeling was able to play it as far as the fuel line but indy sends it right back in Naylor settled the puck down cockerel's rink wide pass it's a skate and is bunted to the fuel line where Jordan Schneider settles it down. Nice feed up ahead into the wheeling zone for Yetman. Takes it behind the net. Up to the point. Teixeira fires a one-timer wide. It comes behind the net. Jam play out in front. Deflected out to the top of the crease, but cleared out of danger by wheeling. Up to the point. Teixeira trying to get it to Riley McKay. His rink-wide pass picked off by Cockrell. Foley brings it into the fuel zone. Now Doherty left circle shoots. Morris with the pad save. Doherty follows his shot to the inboard. Schneider ties him up. And the puck jammed free to Brent Gates. And he'll outlet to Riley McKay, who will play it out to center. Rink wide pass to Gates across the wheeling line. One on two. Tries to split the D. Cannot. McPherson and Ortiz. A nice job defensively to break up the play. Wheeling working it out to center. Tyler Drevich rink wide to Save. He shoots. It goes wide. Save playing his first professional game tonight. And the Nailers turn it over. Three on two for the fuel. Coming the other way. It comes to Spencer Watson. And a beautiful poke check by McPherson. Just as Watson was trying to pull the trigger on a shot from the right wing circle. Forces the puck over to the far boards. Save sends it into the fuel zone. Drevich hops on it behind the Indy net. Working on Lee. Tries to play it up to the point. But the Nailers were in the midst of a change. And nobody was home. And so Victor will go back to get it for the Nailers behind his own net. A great chance there in transition for the fuel. A nice pass bringing Spencer Watson. Almost able to split through the D. But you had said it, Andrew. A real good stick coming back by Dylan McPherson. Six foot three. Plenty of length on that stick. And made a real good play denying Spencer Watson of a shot on goal. And now Farrow takes a hit from Cliff Watson but is able to make the play to get it below the goal line. The fuel try to break it out and do. C.J. Ike. In the neutral zone, Cliff Watson sends it ahead to Tommy Apap across the wheeling line along the right wing boards. Alfaro punches it free, but it comes behind the net. Loose puck collected by the Nailers, and Stevens will play it up. Matt Foley will gain the red line and send it in. The goaltender Morris 
plays it to Parcells, and he'll wrap it around, but Foley picks it off along the board, sends it in front looking for a tip. Save made by Morris. Penalty coming on the fuel as a slashing call is coming as one of the fuel players had to tie up his man to keep him from getting to a rebound at an open net. And so the fuel will be shorthanded with 8.21 to go in the first period. It's Chad Yetman that is sitting for slashing. Well, the turnover originally. Adam Parcells had the puck behind the net, and I don't think he realized how much time he had. He decided to rim it around the boards on the weak side, the near side. And all over it there was Matt Foley, the defenseman, pinching down, sends a puck towards the net, and it would have been a wide-open net if not for what you would probably call a good penalty for Chad Yetman. And now the fuel penalty kill is going to have to go to work with 18-21 to go in the first. The fuel were 3-for-3 three three on the kill on Wednesday night in Fort Wayne, or in, here against Fort Wayne. On the season, they're 78.7%. That's 20th in the league. Wheeling, 11.1% of the power play. It's 27th out of 27 teams. But they've got uh, a lot of firepower out there, especially the guy you want to look out for is Patrick Watling, who has seven goals in nine games so far. The fuel broke up a play, and the Nailers have to regroup at center. Watling sends it ahead, and gaining the line is Oud. Pushed into the far boards, and the fuel able to push it out of the zone. Wheeling brought it back in, but it was offside. Nice defensive work on the penalty kill along the far boards to force the whistle with 1.34 to go on Wheeling's power play by C.J. Ike. Yeah, that was Ike with a great play. Jumping quickly, not allowing the Wheeling Nailers to get set up not allowing them any easy ice near the blue line and he noticed the bobbled puck he's able to get his stick involved and you always know cj ike's going to be giving it his best always a, a great positive attitude and a great defensive play there that allows the indy fuel to get a neutral zone draw draw and kill off a little bit of the clock fuel win the draw clear it all the way down wheeling tried a quick re-entry tommy apat broke that up and sends it all the way down the river Watling for Wheeling in his own line. Sends it to Oud, brings it across the fuel line up the right wing boards to Alfaro. Tries a back diagonal feed. It comes to Hutchison over to the far side, skating in. McPherson dips the shoulder, takes it behind the net. Tries to go across to Watling. It's played off of his stick, but Hutchison takes it back, sends it up to the point for Oud. McPherson center point, right circle Watling. 50 seconds to go in the Wheeling power play. Up to McPherson to Oud, left circle. Fanned on the shot, Leguerrier in perfect position at the top of the crease finds the puck and sends it all the way down. Well, Sam Oud with a broken stick on that play, and that's why he fanned on it. The stick just ruptured in his hand, went wide, and the fuel were able to get it clear. The fuel break up Wheeling's zone entry. Texero with the interception, and Ike backhands it all the way down on goal. 24 seconds to go in the Naylor's power play as McPherson will wind it up from behind his own net. Across his own line, right down the middle. Gains the fuel line offside. The fuel did a good job of standing up at yep. the line and forcing the play offside, forcing McPherson to hold the puck maybe a hair longer than he wanted to. And a second great play again, C.J. Ike. Very influential in this penalty kill and got some help there as well from Keone Tech here, but it's just about holding the line, Andrew. You don't want to give him any easy ice. You don't want to just back into your own zone and allow the power play to come in and get set up. You don't want to be too aggressive to where they just chip it by and then they end up with a breakaway or an odd man rush, but the fuel so far have played the rush against on the penalty kill extremely well with two real strong defensive plays at their own blue line. Foley hammers it in through both corners. The fuel hop on the puck, can't get it out. Held in at the point by Smith. We're back to five aside as Getman's out of the box. Feet out in front, broken up by Gates, sent back into the near corner where Foley Gets to it, up to the point. Smith wrists one toward goal, and Kale Morris makes the save and holds on for a whistle with 6.08 to go. In a first period, we're tied at one. Matt Alfaro for Wheeling, Brent Gates for Indy, the goal scorers. A real positive penalty kill there, too. Some great plays defending the rush like we talked about. Good in zone pressure, bobbled pucks, bad passes. The fuel knew when to go in pressure, and for the most part, really didn't give the Wheeling Nairs a whole heck of a lot in terms of seam passes and shots. Kept everything really to the outside, so an awesome penalty kill for the Fuel. Get some momentum from that, and we'll see if they can find a way to go play a little offense in the Wheeling zone. 
Naylor is able to gain the puck. Ood takes it into the right wing corner, walks the goal line, shovels it out in front, comes all the way out to the point for Foley, working his offside. Back along the boards for Ood. Brings it out to the left point. Spins the forehand. Shot is blocked by Spencer Watson. The fuel springing two on two the other way with Watson and Gates across the line offside as Spencer Watson was a hair ahead of the play. 5.38 to go in the opening period. The Fuel and Naylor's tied at one. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. This is Dr. Ron Yuletti, Chief Physician Executive at Community Health Network. I know that for a lot of you, COVID-19 has changed your day-to-day lives in some pretty dramatic ways. But as things are progressing, there's one thing we sincerely hope you'll continue to do just as before, and that's to seek medical care when you need it. So please, focus on getting the care you need, and we'll focus on keeping you safe while you do. There's no safer place to be. Learn more at ecommunity.com. Exceptional care, simply delivered. Hundreds of certified pre-owned Hondas are in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Like new Hondas for a fraction of the cost. Save thousands with 0.99% financing on certified pre-owned Accords, Civics, CRVs, and Pilots. And get a 7-year, 100,000-mile warranty, 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. Search your local Honda dealer now. Approved tier 1 through 3 credit, 17 to 21 models. See dealer for financing details. Offer ends 1 3 Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. 5.38 to go in the first period. The Indy Fuel and Wheeling Nailers tied at 1. Along with Nick Olchak, I'm Andrew Smith. Glad you've joined us this evening. The second of three games this week here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Tomorrow, the Kalamazoo Wings will be in town. Pucks and Paws night. We'll have some canine friends in the house tomorrow. My favorite night. Lacroix lobs one on goal, and it's plucked out of the air by Alex Dorio. Like, like your labs grabbing the bone after you oh, toss it to him. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's going to be a great night, so those who may be listening, please, please do not hesitate. Bring out your pups. We want to see them. We want to pet them. We want to give them cookies. It's going to be a great night. Always the... Uh, one of the great promotional nights that I really look forward to. Fuel win the draw. Mike Lee fires one wide from the center point. Fuel maintain possession. Lee right point tries to wrist one goal where it's blocked by Watling, who's able to settle the puck down and play it out to center to Hutchison. Quick two on one developing for Wheeling. Hutchison back diagonal for Alfaro, and he misses wide with a one-timer. And Cliff Watson collects the rebound for the Fuel. Chips it high off the glass out to center, and now Indy gains possession. Yetman across the line. In behind of the net for Cedric Lacroix. Tries to put it out in front, but it hops over a stick, comes out to center, where Laguerre settles it down for the fuel. Parcells will backhand it in to the wheeling end, behind the net, wrapped around, held in at the point by Tommy Apap. He'll skate it into the right wing circle, send it back up to the point for Laguerre, the fuel changing out man by man, rink wide pass, Parcells, left circle. Cycles it in behind the net, all the way to the far side for Seamus Malone. Has it along the right wing half wall. Works Alfaro, now brings it back up top to the right point, looks for an opening, wrists one, looking for a tip from APAP. It goes wide, and Ortiz collects for Wheeling. Amidst some pressures, able to backhand it up to Hutchison, who outlets to center. And the Naylor's bring it off side into the fuel zone. Really choppy first period. A lot of icings, a lot of offsides. It kind of looks like a couple of teams that are still kind of finding their timing yep. A little bit here early in the year. And when there's not a ton of positive to build off of, you look for some things. And I think a great last couple of shifts there for the Indy Fuel, Andrew. You, you talked about it. They were able to get a couple of changes, a couple of fresh bodies on the ice. And, yeah, they had about one or two shots towards the net on a nice redirect there at the end by Tommy Apap. But that was the best shift by far of the game for the Indy Fuel in terms of constant and perpetual pressure in the offensive zone. Those are the types of shifts that you got to have a little bit more of if you want to wear down this Nailers team. Fuel gain the line. Brent Gates up the right wing boards. Backhands it in. And it's taken behind the net by Wheeling, but forced free by the Fuel. Sit out in front. It hits a Wheeling leg. Loose in the slot, but the Nailers, Hausinger is able to find it and skate it out of danger. Puck sent over to the far side. Drevich tried to bang it out. It hit a Fuel skate. Comes into the left wing corner of the Wheeling end. Spencer Watson takes it behind the net. Pops out the right side. Turns to the forehand. Dorio is able to seal the near post and take Watson's shot. Spencer again with a one-timer, this time below the hash marks, but he misses just wide. A couple of good looks for Spencer Watson, now wheeling. Once transition, Save to Drevich over to the far side, and it hit the heel of Hausinger's stick, 
or he might have had a good look. Foley. Outside hash right side. In behind the net for Hosinger. And he's practically tackled as the puck squirts out as Jordan Schneider was coming back on D and Kale Morris able to cover it up to get a whistle with 3.09 to go in the first period of a one-to-one game and chances on both ends there. Spencer Watson with a really good look on the one-timer from between the circles. And the reason why that chance was able to happen for Spencer Watson was a great pinch in by Keone Teixeira, Tyler Drevich. The winger in that situation just couldn't get the puck out because Teixeira came down with a great active stick. One hand fully extended, keeps the play alive. Watson with a turnaround chance and then the opportunity in the slot, as you mentioned, Andrew, just went wide. So a couple of good looks, all created by the Indy Fuel defenseman being active, creating offense and keeping the play alive in the offensive zone. And we know when the Fuel are playing at their best, their defensemen are active, so another great play by one of the top defensemen on this team in Keone Teixeira. Just over three minutes to go in the first period. The Fuel win the defensive zone draw. Shots are nine apiece. The goals are one apiece. Wheeling has the puck. Foley in his own end. Sends it across for Oud. Right down Main Street across the Fuel line. Shoots. It's deflected, but right into the glove of Kale Morris, who holds on for a whistle with 2.51 to go. A little bit of discussion after the whistle. Jacob Rakucki didn't seem to be too happy. And now here comes Cockrell and Doherty trying to get at one of the fuel players as a referee was, I think, trying to signal guys off the ice and signal for the, uh, the, the fuel to have their change. And now it looks like Indy will complete it as cooler heads prevail. And a textbook defensive play off the rush as well from Cliff Watson. Got his stick on that shot from Oud as he came flying through the neutral zone. Just that quick stick at the last second made a little bit of an easier save as the puck was slowed up quite a bit. It allowed Cam Mor- or Kale Morris to just get a glove on it as he had some bodies coming together at the whistle at the net. Puck was loose in the slot off the faceoff. Mike Lee was able to get it out as far as the point to get it out of danger. Puck wrapped around, comes out to the point again where Liam Folks picks it off for Indy. Gains the center red line and fires it into the wheeling end. Dorio, the goaltender, will reverse it back to Oud along the far boards, and he'll lob it out to center where it's settled down by Cliff Watson and sent right back in to the wheeling end. Folks goes after it with Oud into the far corner. Those two follow the puck. Tommy Apap tries to dig it free. Folks does. Right circle. Sends it back up top now to Cliff Watson. Fires through traffic. It was deflected just wide. On a shot from the left point. Lee backhands it in behind the net, looking for APAP, but it hit the linesman. Tommy APAP's able to track it down along the far boards. Loose to Seamus Malone in the right circle. Couldn't do anything with it, but it comes out to Mike Lee. Settles it down, dips the shoulder, gets past Watley. Now leaves it for Liam Fulks. Right circle. Looks for a shooting angle. Can't find one. Backs back up. Back up to the point. Malone shot. Gets all the way through from the blue line and Dorio able to make a glove save through traffic and hold on for a whistle with 148 to go in a first period where we're tied at one. For the most part the Fuel have done a real nice job of getting bodies to the net and that's been the one thing Andrew when the Fuel have had pressure constant and sustained pressure in the offensive zone they've done an outstanding job of getting pucks from low to high and the bodies don't just stay to the outside they go right to the net think about the Brent Gates goal low to high get right to the net look for those rebounds and redirect so a good opportunity there only thing that was missing was nobody in front and if Alex Dorio sees it he's going to stop it but again some great pressure and all assets in the offensive zone Wheeling wins the draw Spencer Watson well, in on the four check, but the nailer is able to work it across the line. McPherson shot out of a cannon right down Main Street, then behind the net, tried to put it out in front for Watling, broken up by the fuel. Watling tracks it down along the far boards, but a good sweep check by Brent Gates is able to force it back into the wheeling end. McPherson indirect pass out to center rink wide for Hutchison, sends it across for Ortiz, back to Hutchison, right circle, shoots, hit the crossbar. Nick Hutchison. Hit the crossbar with a shot from inside the right wing circle, and I think our referee is going to look at it. Yeah. From my vantage point, Andrew, looked like it went square off the post. I don't think you could have hit it any better, any more on the nose. It just came out so quickly. 
It didn't look like it lost any velocity. So that's just my initial read on the play is that it went square off that right post, beat the glove cleanly of Kale Morris as Nick Hutchinson cuts from the outside to the inside. And no, you're right, Andrew. You said it right off the crossbar. So that's, you said it perfectly. Couldn't hit the bar any more square. And no goal, but you love to see the official Jacob Rukaki and linesman going in to make sure that they get the call right. But just a heck of a shot from Nick Hutchinson, the former Indy Fuel player, beat Morris cleanly, but that blue painted pipe was Morris's best friend. Yeah, Hutchinson has been a real asset for Wheeling. His rights reverted to Adirondack after the season ended last year, after he played the year with the Fuel. And he was traded to Wheeling right at the start of the season. And, uh, has really fit in well with them now with nine points in ten games as he has an assist on their goal in this one. And nearly had himself a goal there, but rang the crossbar. And now here's a turnover right in front. Hutchison backhander, but he was bothered enough and couldn't get the shot through. Foley across to Smith, left point. Sends it across looking for Alfaro. It hit a skate. Alfaro tracks it down along the near boards. Sends it a little further along for Foley. Now Hutchison into the high slot, Watling. Takes it out to the top of the left wing circle. Alfaro just sticked down one of the fuel players. Fires, and Morris makes the save. And now Hutchison and Lacroix are having some words. And Lacroix went right to Jacob Rakucki and said, Look, I got uh, high sticked by Alfaro behind the play, and you didn't see it. And because of that, play continues. And sometimes you just notice that behind the play and those of you watching yeah. on flow hockey you see it happening yeah. and now our referee is going to talk to the linesman the linesman can't call penalties but they yeah. can't advise uh, pretty clearly a penalty there and it was on the left part of the screen for those who were able to see it on flow hockey and while it was unintentional for matt alfaro you always have to be in control of your stick and in that situation andrew really the only time a penalty is not called is if it's, if it's a, a follow through and a shot but if your stick is just all around, all willy-nilly, and you catch somebody in the face like that, it should have been a penalty. And from my vantage point, the referee was watching the puck. He didn't see what was going on behind the play, and the wheeling there was almost able to get a goal out of it. And they got away with one there, but the fuel bring it into the zone. Seamus Ball on back diagonal feed. It's loose in the crease and squirts just wide as Tommy Apap ended up firing it wide with Doria way out of his cage. Seamus Malone, far boards. Collects the puck, walks the line, takes it out to the left point, wrist one through traffic. Dory was able to make the save, and the puck chips high off the glass out to center. Malone tried to hammer it in. Trevich hit him just as the horn sound. Tommy Apap took exception to that, and Hosinger then wrestled Apap to the ice. Apap did not like the hit Drevich put on right at the buzzer. Let Drevich know it. Now Drevich is trying to get to another fuel player as APAP is being skated to the dressing room by the linesman. Like Drevich was trying to get at Seamus Malone. And uh, he has been escorted away from the play. Cooler heads appear to be prevailing. How about that chance right before that as well, Andrew? The two-on-one, great little saucer pass. Gets a little elevation under the puck from Seamus Malone to the backdoor pat play for Liam Folks. And the puck was just rolling on him. He didn't allow him to get a clean shot. When he went to shoot it, it was on edge off of his tape, so he had to just kind of play the puck back between his legs, hoping for that second wave coming. Nothing ended up materializing, but a great pass from Malone. Missed chance because of a bobbled puck for Folks. And then we get a little bit of a meeting of the minds at the end of the period. Cedric Lacroix has come out of the locker room. He is... Uh, still asking why there was no call on his high stick earlier and I think it just came down to the referee didn't see it and uh, that happens so Duncan Del Mayo, the assistant coach and said he head off the ice we're tied at one through a period the shots on goal 11 and 10 in favor of Wheeling the Nailers had the only power play of the period it was unsuccessful those are our first intermission stats. They are presented by Midwest Sport and Spy, the official chiropractor of the Indy Fuel. We're going to take a break. When we come back, our first intermission show commences as Nick and I will recap the first period and 
we'll uh, we'll talk to Nick about some pretty cool things that have been happening in uh, in his career as well, especially since we last saw saw him a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to take a break. We'll come back right after this with our first intermission show. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Midwest Sport and Spine is the official chiropractor of the Indy Fuel. Go where the fuel go for sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Midwest Sport and Spine offers state-of-the-art technology, chiropractic physical therapy, athletic training, and massage therapy all under one roof. And yes, we take your insurance. Take advantage of our fuel fan discount for a $59 introductory massage offer. Midwest Sport and Spine, sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Go to MidwestSportAndSpineCenter.com to schedule your appointment now. Remember Krista from Kemper Technology Consulting last year? What's icy? Well, she's learned a lot since then. Get him! Hit him again! Shoot! And she's become a huge Fuel fan. Go, Fuel! Let the team at Kemper put that same enthusiasm to work for you. Specializing in accounting software support with QuickBooks Professional Certification, Kemper gives you real people solving real problems. They can also help your network infrastructure, too. Call 866-966-5633 or visit KemperTC.com. Come on, Rev! Back to Indy Fuel Hockey with Nick Olchek and Andrew Smith. First intermission at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. The Indy Fuel and Wheeling Nailers tied at one. The scoring summary, Matt Alfaro forced a turnover 240 into the game or, or took advantage of a turnover. It was Nick Hutchison who forced it and fed Alfaro out front. Alfaro's first of the year from Hutchison giving Wheeling a one to nothing lead. But the Fuel answered less than three minutes later. Brent Gates with a deflection on a shot from Keone Takshera at 5.20 of the first period, tying the game up at one. As we mentioned earlier, the shots on goal, 11 to 10 in favor of the Nailers. Wheeling this season averaging 36 shots a game. They lead the league in shots on goal per game. The Fuel are 11th in shot suppression allowing 29 shots a game. So Wheeling's a team that generally you expect them to play more of what we would consider a, a, a grinded out type game, but they've been able to make things happen off the rush, and we've seen a lot of end-to-end -end play in that first period. Uh, we see that with both teams getting double digits in the uh, on the shot clock, and so far, a one-to-one -one score as Kale Morris and Alex Dorio have been good when they have had to be. And really, you can't fault the goaltender on either goal. One was a turnover below the goal line and a guy left all alone in the slot. And the other was an absolutely perfect deflection by Brent Gates that no goaltender is going to stop unless he just happens to get lucky and yeah. the puck hits him. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, just the, I think certain times throughout that first period Andrew there was some real sloppy play from both teams in their own zone turning pucks over and not able to break it out cleanly and I think as the period went along they started to establish the way that they both want to play and I think you hit the nail on the head a couple of really nice offensive zone time sustained pressure for the Indy Fuel able to get a couple of changes able to get some fresh bodies on the ice and and try and go to work in a couple of real nice plays. Again, moving the puck from low to high. That's one thing that we saw the Fuel do a lot of in that first period, and it worked. A couple instances, they had bodies at the net, resulting in the Brent Gates goal. A couple of times, they didn't. So I think the emphasis going into the second period when Doug Christensen is sitting in there with his team saying, okay, well, what do we want to keep doing? It's getting pucks to the net, but you got to make sure you have bodies there because Alex Dorio is too good of a goaltender to where if he's going to see the puck, he's going to stop it 10 times out of 10. And you look, when you've got defensemen like Mike Lee and Keone Teixeira, who are really good playmakers, have really good shots from the point, and Mike Lee especially is really good at getting a shot through to the net through traffic, that's a good luxury to have. You want to win pucks in the cycle and use your points and make things happen. Because when you have guys that are like fourth forwards out there, Andrew, it's really, really tough to defend because then you force the defending team to have to skate all around their zone. Sometimes you get guys caught in between. You know, do you want to have a winger down low if the defenseman goes down? Do you want to force a switch off between a defending defenseman and a winger? if your D is going to become active. So it is instrumental with the way that the Indy Fuel want to play. And we've seen it every year since Doug Christensen has been here. He wants active defensemen, defensemen that are mobile, that know when to pinch down. They know when to keep plays alive, but they also know when to live the fight another day and pull out and just allow the offense to take care of itself 
in the uh, the, oppo the opposing team zone. So look, plenty of things to build off of. Would uh, you know probably forget about the first five or seven minutes for the fuel. But again, I think as that period went along, they started to establish their game in the offensive zone. And hopefully, they can keep that going here in the middle frame. The fuel are only on the penalty kill once, but a very aggressive penalty kill and as you mentioned they saw when the puck was bobbled they saw when they had openings to gain possession clear the puck and they had very active sticks and a guy who's kind of been a role player he's the only veteran on this fuel team cj ike has been an ace penalty killer and doug christensen said before the season he's a guy that's going to take on that joe sullivan role of being a penalty killer of and kind of doing a lot of the dirty work and they've used him primarily as a 10th forward this season but he really shines on the penalty kill and he did again there and he's a heck of a 10th forward to have i mean that position and that role cannot be understated especially in this league andrew where you're going to have a lot of injuries it's a long grind of a season you're going to have players get called up you want somebody that's going to be able to be there who's been around who knows what it's like to play in that role and then cj ike embodies what a role player is he understands what he's there to do to kill penalties to go out there and, and to be an energy type of guy and when things aren't going your way when you're not playing your best kind of like the fuel in the early part of that first period you send him out on the ice you know he's going to be going about a million miles an hour and trying to knock guys over and, and just get a little bit of energy and when you don't bring your legs sometimes he's going to be able to be a guy who drags you into the fight so i thought a a couple of great uh, plays that he made defensively on the penalty kill. He's an ace penalty killer. And if you can have a guy like that as your 10th forward in your back pocket, that's a real luxury to have for head coach Doug Christensen. Like Cliff Watson, a native of Appleton, Wisconsin, those two were teammates at Michigan Tech for three years and now back together with the Indy Fuel. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you our first intermission guest who happens to be the guy who sits to my right. And we'll just talk hockey and uh, and a little bit more about uh, some of the great stuff that is uh, going on with my good friend and broadcast partner, Nick Olchek. It comes up right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers Insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. When you get care at Community Health Network, you're part of our community. And in our community, nothing should get between you and your health, not even the cost of care. When the time comes, our advocacy team will help you figure it out, whether you're uninsured or underinsured, so you can focus on what really matters, your health. Community Health Network. Exceptional care. Simply delivered. Get support at ecommunity.com slash simply delivered. Stand by me. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. First intermission at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum, the Indy Fuel and Wheeling Nailers are tied at one and time for our first intermission guest and he's a voice that you are used to hearing here in his third year as the color analyst with the indy fuel here and uh, my outstanding broadcast partner nick olchek and since we last shared a booth you've had a, a pretty eventful last couple of weeks as we, we talk about the ECHL being a developmental league for players, but it's also a developmental league for officials, for coaches, and, yes, for us broadcasters as well. And you got a chance uh, a couple of weeks ago to get the, the call out of the bullpen <laughs> and uh, make your National Hockey League broadcasting debut at the Chicago Blackhawks as they played the Pittsburgh Penguins at the United Center and uh, worked on WGN Radio with, with the outstanding John Weideman and... Uh, First of all, congratulations, and you know we have spoken uh, a few times since then, but but uh, congratulations to you for getting that opportunity and and earning that opportunity. But uh, just describe what that was like for you to really have that whirlwind day to get the call in the morning and say, "Hey, look, you're needed on the air tonight, and uh, you're making you're making your NHL debut." Yeah, yeah. No, first off, Andrew, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank you for everything over the years. 
You've been a grade A broadcast partner and most importantly a tremendous friend. So that, that's where it all starts. And of course a massive thank you to the Indy Fuel organization who gave me my start. Jim Hallett, Larry McQuarrie, everybody in the Indy Fuel organization that uh, has been instrumental in allowing me to do what I love to do. Mark Granda included, Dana Roth, everybody. Uh, has been so gracious and of course the great Indy Fuel fans who have done nothing but uh, keep me going and, and, and uh, you know keep me loving loving life here in Indy um, but just to take you through a whirlwind of what was uh, November 9th for me I, I woke up to a phone call from somebody in the Chicago Blackhawk organization and they said hey Nick uh, Kaylee Chelios who was supposed to do the game at the time uh, was ill um, and the other person that we were going to ask is, is out of town uh, would you like to do the Blackhawk and Penguin game tonight? And to be honest, Andrew, it was like 7.05 in the morning. And I woke up and I pretended like I had already gone for a run and worked out. <laughs> so I was just like, hello, yes, hello, hello. And uh, they, I, got, I was posed with that question. And honestly, for a second, I, I thought to myself, I said, did I ever wake up? Am, am I still sleeping? Am I dreaming? And, uh, of course, I said yes a million times over. And it was just a whirlwind of a day and so I strapped up my boots showered put on my pants and sprinted down to the United Center and was able to be around a couple of the guys at the morning skate talk to the newly mentored head coach Derek King and a couple of the people in the Blackhawk organization and they couldn't have been any more gracious to me and uh, you know started with Rocky Wirtz, Danny Wirtz, Jamie Faulkner, Adam Rogowin the entire Blackhawk organization for uh, for allowing me just a, an incredible honor and I thank them immensely uh, for allowing me to, to do that game and uh, to complete what was a long time dream of mine um, but just a whirlwind of a day and honestly Andrew I tell people this they say were you nervous I said I honestly I wasn't nervous at all it was one of the you know I really wasn't nervous at all it was one of the most comfortable broadcasts I've ever done and I think the reason why is just because it was such a whirlwind of a day it just came out of nowhere and I think if I would have found out a week prior I would have been uh, sweating a little bit uh, going into my first game but just a whirlwind of a day an emotional day to be able to share that moment with with my dad doing the, the TV color side and, and me doing the radio was uh, was an awesome moment for for our entire family and um, you know as a kid who grew up calling games in his bedroom playing video games and watching hockey on TV and keeping the family up at two in the morning because I'm getting excited calling the games uh, it's uh, it's all kind of come full circle and absolutely love what I do so again a massive thank you to the entire Indy Fuel organization who gave me my start and, of course, the Blackhawks for, for allowing me to uh, to do what I've always wanted to do. And getting a chance to work with John Whiteman, too. Yeah. You mentioned not really having any nerves and yeah. and to work with a pro. And the funny thing was, as we were leaving the last game we did together a couple of weeks ago, uh, I almost texted you and said, Listening to John Whiteman is a good way to feel inadequate as a broadcaster because he is so yeah. incredibly good and professional. And, of course, longtime fans, uh, myself included, remember when he was doing Cincinnati Cyclones games back in the 90s. Right. And uh, you can hear him from a section over at Market Square <laughs> Arena. Just to describe what it's like to work yeah. with uh, with a pro like John and, and how that really helps ease you into that yeah yeah no he is the definition of professionalism i don't think there's any question about that you talk to anybody he's got the utmost respect in the in the hockey world and especially in terms of of broadcasters and i think he just made me feel comfortable andrew and he does that with everybody right i mean the blackhawks are are in a transition with the broadcast and they've had a couple of people in colin frazier's called games this year paul capanigri has called games this year kaylee chelios as well and 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 and, and me also so uh, you know, the job for Johnny Weideman has not been easy. Multiple broadcast partners trying to get everybody in and, and find out what their uh, what their ticks are, how they like to call games, and how they like to get in and out, and their cadence and the way that they like to do things. So, I mean, working with him has just been uh, incredible. Uh, he's as gracious of a guy as there is. Uh, extremely easy to work with, and by that I mean he just always knows the right thing to talk about. He's always in tune with what the heck's going on on the ice, and just I think first and foremost, just a, a first-class guy off the ice and was extremely receptive. Because look, he doesn't have to be nice. I mean, he's a legend in the business, and you know he doesn't have to welcome new people in, you know, in, into his broadcast booth. And uh, but he did. He was unbelievable with me, and, and hopefully get a chance to call uh, a lot more games with him in the future. And and of course a massive thank you 
to Troy Murray, who is is battling cancer right now. Um, and, and our thoughts and prayers are certainly with him Absolutely. above anything else. Uh, but for him to give me his blessing and allow me to sit in his throne, not his chair, his throne, alongside Johnny Weideman was, was an incredible uh, incredible blessing and just honored to have gotten his thumbs up to be able to do it. Well, and I know it was a really special moment last spring when you and your father did a game together here, uh, the three of us here in Indy, but had to be extra special for you even though you were in separate broadcast booths to be doing the same game in the National Hockey League. And it's funny because it was similar to the drive, Andrew, that we had coming down here because when we did the game last year with you, we uh, we drove down to Indy together in a little bit you know, of a different uh, destination driving down, but we drove down to the United Center as well on the, in that game and just a lot of emotions. Uh, and, and look, at the end of the day, I've always wanted to get to the National Hockey League and knew I would never get there as a player, but uh, always wanted to get there as a broadcaster and to say that I've at least called one game in the National Hockey League is just an incredible thing and, and a moment that I will always look back on and uh, with, uh, with a whole lot of joy. Well, first of many, for sure. Thank you. And also, get a chance uh, to turn on NBC Sports Chicago. You'll catch Nick on a few Notre Dame games as well as you've been the uh, analyst for a couple. you got another one coming up next Friday yeah. when the Irish take on Boston College. Yeah. It's been great to get some TV experience yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah that's been... It's been awesome to do that, and look, I mean, there's there's nothing I've ever wanted to do more than to be a broadcaster, whether it be radio, whether it be TV. They're both really, really special in their own unique way, and you know, a, a massive thank you to everybody at Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish community, Mark Bellotti of the NBC Sports Group, who has kind of spearheaded and allowed me to, to jump in there, and, and hopefully I've done well, and hopefully people have been happy with uh, what they've seen and what they've heard, but uh, all these things going for me, it's just been, it's been a blur. But, again, to the entire Indy Fuel organization and fan base who gave me my start, I owe you guys the biggest thank you. Well, it's it's a pleasure to share the booth with you. It's uh, been a fun three years, and it's, uh, you know, when, when was listening a week and a half ago and uh, hearing my broadcast partner <laughs> on an NHL broadcast and, and describing you know, what Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane are doing, it. Uh, certainly made me and i think a lot of our uh, our fans here feel a lot of pride in, in what you've accomplished and what you will continue to accomplish in this game it's been uh, it's been tremendous and as i said it's the first of many i'm really proud of you partner and uh, thank you man I, I like i said i appreciate it and i tell everybody this whether it's on the air or in in private uh, i don't think i could have asked for a better first broadcast partner in you uh, everything you've been uh, helping me out with over the years and uh, you know a massive a massive kudos to you as well so let's uh, hope for an Indy Fuel win tonight but yeah a, a massive thank you to everybody involved and uh, like I said hopefully uh, hopefully the first of many to come yeah they, and uh, certainly it, it is a pleasure and we turn our eyes to the ice the second period about to begin the puck is down and away we go and we're going to skate four aside to begin the second period as Tommy Apap and Cam Hausinger each got penalties at the end of the first period tied at one shot comes from the point from the uh, uh, shot comes from the point from Foley and the uh, Fuel will gain possession. Actually, it looks like there were maybe a few more penalties than those two, but those are the two on the board. We'll get those sorted out at the first break as we can. The Fuel bring it across the line. Brent, uh, Brent Gates sends it back up to the point. Lee over to the far circle, back into the high slot. Cliff Watson fires and scores. He beats Dorio stick side as the Fuel beautifully cycled the puck through the offensive zone of the four on four. Found Watson in the slot, and he fires it past Dorio on the fuel lead at 2-1. to one. Well, how about two goals in two games for Cliff Watson? The only goal last game against Fort Wayne, and he's on the board now with a go-ahead goal. A great play as he just comes streaking through the slot area. A heck of a pass from Yetman. Takes it away, away from traffic, and a little ice burner. Five hole on Alex Dorio, and... Andrew, I know Cliff's parents are here. I know his brother Cooper's watching, so it's a family affair for the Watsons here in Indy, and great to see the big boy Cliff get on the board, one of the leaders of this team. And he's got his second goal in as many games. 
Second of the season for Cliff Watson. And are we reviewing something here? Our referee is over at the scorer's bench. I think maybe sorting out the penalties. Hausinger and APAP each got matching roughing minors at the end of the first period. All is good. And we're ready to continue playing the fuel with a 2-1 to lead on Cliff Watson's goal on the four on four will remain four aside for the next minute 24 Wheeling wins the draw McPherson sends it up the far side to Nick Hutchison two on two across the line with Ood Hutchison tries to dip the shoulder take it to goal send it across it comes behind the net Yetman and Lee with the assists on Cliff Watson's goal 37 seconds into the period now here's an opportunity the other way for Ortiz he was all alone in front of the net but Morris was able to hold it out Jared Thomas wins the pocket of his own line, sprays it back into the wheeling zone. McPherson takes it along the far boards, outlets to Ortiz, he'll skate it through center. Three on two across the line, hustling back, however, to break up the play very nicely is Jared Thomas, brings it the other way, feeds Spencer Watson, who dragged the skate to stay on side. Watson at the right point will curl it back into the neutral zone to maintain possession. Mike Lee backhands it into the wheeling end. Half a minute to go on the four on four, the fuel already with a goal in this four-on-four situation. Naylor spray it into the fuel zone. Cliff Watson goes back for it and barely wins the race for icing. And so an offensive zone draw coming for the fuel. A minute 51 into the second period. And there's 20 seconds remaining on the penalties. That should not be the case. As the penalties were at the 20-minute mark, those guys should be out of the box at the 18-minute mark. They've had a snafu with the clock, and I think the penalty timekeeper is trying to say something to the uh, scorer. Mike Lee over to the far side. Cliff Watson back up to the point for Lacroix, and they are going to let the guys out, even though there's still time on the penalty clocks. As the uh, Nailers bring it across the line. Doherty has it poked off a of his stick nicely with the check of Cliff Watson. In behind the net, Kale Morris, the former Notre Dame Fighting Irish goaltender and Mike Richter Award winner. We'll send it around to Lacroix at center. Broken up by the Nailers. Here comes Drevich the other way. Feet across for Doherty. His shot goes high. And the fuel gained possession. Lacroix on the far boards. Can't win the puck. It's taken back by Doherty. He fires a wrister from the right point. And a stick save made by Kale Morris. Puck sent across by Doherty. Back up to the point for Stevens, broken up by the fuel. And Yetman forces it into the wheeling zone where it's settled down by Tyler Drevich of the Nailers. Right across the logo, feeds Bobby Hampton. His dump in hits a leg and careens in on Kale Morris, who had to adjust but was able to and glove it to get a whistle with 17.07 to go. You can tell Morris was about to go uh -huh. to the corner to play that puck, and then it hit a leg and he had to scramble back and it slowed down enough where he was able to do so. Well, his right foot was out of the crease. Left foot luckily was still in injury. He was able to make that quick adjustment at the last second. And that dump in, I think, from Drevich, it went right off the leg of Mike Lee. And it's a good thing that Morris still had one foot back in the paint to where he was able to readjust. Because if he had left the net, I mean, that would have been a wide open yawning cage. But the fuel able to dodge a bullet on kind of a broken play entering the zone for Wheeling. Nailers win the draw. Puck into the left wing circle. Watling sends it low for Alfaro. Tries to backhand it on goal. Morris makes a save, but we have a holding penalty coming. Yeah, I think it's coming to Jordan Schneider. It was a battle in the near side corner to the right of Kale Morris. And it was Jordan Schneider going to be called for holding. He is a left-handed defenseman is top handed is, is his right hand so when you start locking on with that left hand your free hand you start wrapping that around the opposing forward you're going to get called every time that was the case and the Indy Fuels penalty kill will get another workout here 16.53 to go in the second penalty minutes number 24 and 25 for Schneider the fuel to the penalty kill for the second time in this game Wheeling was unsuccessful on its first power play. A 
Nick Hutchison to take the draw, left wing circle. The Nailers on the season are four for 37 on the power play. Just a shade under 11%. And the faceoff won by the fuel. Cliff Watson around to Seamus Malone. And he will hoist it out of the zone, back into the wheeling end. Puck rolling in behind the net. Tommy Apap tried to chop it toward goal. Ortiz was able to block it wide. And Ortiz being bothered by Apap drops it back to Watling. who will bring it across centerette, across the fuel line. And the zone entry was delayed. Hutchison has to regroup in the neutral zone. All the way back to Ood in his own zone. Two great sticks, too, there by Cliff Watson as this four-man blue line just continues to be uber strong for the fuel. Started with Cliff Watson, then a good play there again. The fuel have just been a brick wall at their own blue line. Naylor's able to send it in behind the net. They gain possession, try to put it out in front, but it's blocked by Teixeira, and it comes free over to the far side where it's cleared all the way down by Seamus Malone. Three stellar plays on that penalty killing shift there, Andrew, from Cliff Watson. The two great step-ups with a good stick. And then that time they're able to jar the puck loose. And instead of just trying to throw the puck himself, a little touch to the middle, Malone was able to clear a heck of a play. Riley McKay brings it into the wheeling zone, shorthanded right circle. Ood pushes him into the boards, pushes him down, and that allows Watling to come back to take the puck. Watling across the line to Al Faro, left circle, sends it to the trailer. Drevich right between the hash marks. His shot's blocked, comes out to Stevens into the right wing circle. Stevens takes it behind the net. Laguerrier forces it free, and it's bunted over to the far boards. A nice play by Riley McKay. Basically a self-pass out of the slot to the far boards to get it out of danger, and then he clears. And that came moments after he made the play on Tyler Drevich. All of a sudden, it looked like there was nobody between him and the net right in the low slot. He came back with a quick back-checking stick, denied the play, and then that great play to get the puck out as well. Fuel clear the zone. Chad Yetman across the line with six seconds to go on the kill. Yetman left circle. Curls back to the forehand. Back diagonal to Teixeira. The fuel back to full strength as Schneider's out of the box. In possession in the offensive zone. Lacroix battling right wing corner. Has a force free from him by Tim Doherty of Wheeling. And the Nailers will reverse it to the other side. Hosinger up through center. Rink wide pass for Doherty across the fuel line. Left side shoots from the left circle. Positional save. Morris, he holds on for a whistle. And there's pushing and shoving. No surprise Cedric Lacroix is involved. He and Hosinger trying to get at each other. The linesman is in between them. Well, the penalty kill tonight, Andrew, for the Indy Fuel has looked really good. Defending off the rush, not allowing Wheeling really any space entering the zone. And I think if you're the Wheeling Nailers, you have to make an adjustment. You can't just keep skating into the brick wall. That is the Indy Fuel four penalty killer standing four across at the blue line. You can't just keep trying to carry the puck in. If you want to get in the zone, you got to try and look to dump it in, but put it to an area where you're going to have a chance to get it back, whether it's a soft chip, cross corner dump, hard rim around the boards, keeping it away from the goaltender, hoping that the weak side guy can get there. So while the penalty killing has been great for the fuel, it's almost like the Wheeling Nailers are just skating into the hands of the fuel every time when they're on the power play. But some great things to see while down a man for the fuel. With a defensive zone draw coming to the right of Kale Morris. 14.32 to go. Second period. The fuel lead 2-1. Cliff Watson with the go-ahead goal. 37 seconds into the second period. Fuel in the defensive zone draw, but the Nailers able to pinch down, hold the puck in. It's loose in the slot. Played out of danger by Cliff Watson. He tried to make that to Schneider. He tried to chop it up. The, off the boards and out of play, but it was deflected off of a wheeling stick and into the stand. So another offensive zone draw coming from wheeling. Shots are 15-11 in favor of the Nailers. The Fuel have scored on their only shot of this period. Cam Hosinger, one of a number of new faces on this wheeling team, wins the draw, but it comes out loose into the high slot where Liam Folks collects for Indy. He'll curl back, give it to Teixeira who skates it up through center. Ahead to Tommy Apap. He'll backhand it into the zone. Dorio sends it along up to the point, held in by Schneider. He'll fire it around the carousel all the way to Keone Teixeira, right point. Cycles it back into the right wing corner. And battling for the puck is Tommy Apap. It's played off of his stick. 
And sent all the way across the rink, all the way back into the fuel zone where Jordan Schneider will collect for Indy. D to D to Teixeira. Up the far side, he sends it all the way down, but it's no icing because it ended up on goal. He banked it off the boards right in on Doria. Stretch pass to the fuel line. Trevich was offside. A couple of really nice shoulder checks on that last play from Jordan Schneider going back, making a good defensive play, evading the wheeling nailers pressure. And the fuel are able to avoid some offense against them because of that great look defensively from Schneider finding uh, Keone Teixeira around the net. 13.34 to go in the second period. The fuel lead 2-1. to one. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers Insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. Hundreds of certified pre-owned Hondas are in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Like new Hondas for a fraction of the cost. Save thousands with 0.99% financing on certified pre-owned Accords, Civics, CRVs, and Pilots. And get a 7-year, 100,000-mile warranty, 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. Search your local Honda dealer now. Proof tier 1 through 3 credit, 17 to 21 models. See dealer for financing details. Offer ends 1 don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. 13.34 to go in the second period. The Indy Fuel lead the Wheeling Nailers 2-1. to one. Cliff Watson and Brent Gates have scored for Indy. Answering Matt Alfaro's goal that gave Wheeling an early lead. And Brent Gates trying to make something happen again off the faceoff as he jammed it toward goal, then tried to bunt it out in front. And Spencer Watson put it on goal, but Doria was able to hold the near post from a in tight shot. Puck squirts free after some board battles below the goal line. Comes to McPherson of Wheeling up the left wing boards. Into the fuel zone. The left wing corner. Morris tried to wait for it to get into the trapezoid, but it didn't have enough steam to do so. And the Nailers got to it briefly. The fuel able to play it to the Wheeling line. Hopping on it is Brent Gates. Takes it into the right wing corner. Sends it up along the boards to Jared Thomas. Right point. Across now to Cliff Watson. One-timer on goal. Dorio makes the save. Rebound hops straight up in the air. Spencer Watson tried to hop on it, but he couldn't do anything with it. Nailers come the other way. Oud across the line. One on three. Takes a big hit from Mike Lee from behind that separates him from the puck. Fuel can't clear it out. Doherty holds it in at the left point. Pucks it in behind the net. Cliff Watson will go D to D to Lee up the right side. Stretch pass to the wheeling line. Yetman tried to feed it across for Thomas. He hits a leg. A victor and comes into the near corner, and the Nailers want transition the other way. Nick Hutchison plays it ahead for Matt Alfaro across the fuel line up the left wing boards. Into the left corner. Delivers the hit on Texera, who is trying to deliver a shoulder check and maintains possession. Watling, left point. Low for Alfaro, in behind the net for Hutchison. Pops out the right side, forced to curl back in by Lacroix. Over to Watling, left wing boards. Takes it out to the point, curls to the forehand. Tries to play it further along in the cycle. It's punched free by the fuel, and Indy's able to clear. And sends it back to the wheeling line, where Matt Foley will grab it. Alfaro up the far side. Banks it into the fuel zone. Jacob Laguerrier goes back to get it. Puts on the brakes. Loses his four-checker and brings it up through center. Laguerrier across the wheeling line. Up to the right side, Seamus Mullen. Dips the shoulder, force behind the net. Tries to put it out in front. But a shot is blocked wide. And then another attempt to put it out in front from Tommy Apap is cleared by Wheeling. Seamus Mullen, quick re-entry, high slot, shoots, stick save made by Dorio. In behind the net, Apap follows it into the near corner. Sends it through both corners over to the left side where it's taken by Seamus Malone in the corner. Behind the net. Right side, Laguerrier shoots it. A stick saves made by Dorio, who is well positioned. That shot from the top of the right wing circle. Nailers clearing out to center. Hausinger looking for Save into the fuel zone. Save making his professional debut. Played a couple of games for Penn State last year. 
Puck held in at the line in front. All alone was Hausinger in front of the net, but he couldn't do anything with it. It exploded off of his stick. And the puck comes trickling in on Morris, who plucks it out of the air to get a whistle with 10.33 to go and relieve the pressure. The fuel leading 2-1 to one here in the second period. A whale of a shift there for Seamus Malone. With the puck, without the puck in the offensive zone, coming back and making a nice defensive play. Andrew, I'm not sure if he got a stick on that opportunity as Adam Parcells tried to rim the puck around the boards, was turned over. Wheeling keeps the play alive, all alone in front. And number nine in the red jersey came back and I think he might have gotten a stick on it to deny that shot towards Cale Morris, but just a heck of a shift there from Seamus Malone in the offensive zone and coming back and doing his defensive due diligence as well. Seamus Malone's been really good in all three zones tonight, especially. Been very noticeable. Jared Thomas across the line, shoots, it's blocked wide on his shot from the high slot. Ortiz for Wheeling, skies it into the fuel zone. This looks like and will be icing as Mike Lee goes back to get the touch with 10.15 to go. In period number two, the fuel leading 2-1. to one. And back to Seamus Malone. Yeah. He's just been really noticeable, and not just with the puck, but his play away from the puck in the defensive zone, making things happen offensively on the cycle, have, have been really big for this fuel team. Well, he has some real grit to his game, Andrew, and I think that serves him really well playing away from the puck he doesn't shy away from the rough stuff he goes to the tough areas when the puck's on his stick especially in that last shift he just seems to get quicker and again we have seen him play a big role on this team this year power play minutes can play penalty kill as well and the guy who as this season goes along if he can find a way to stay healthy he can play a big role Naylor's with some pressure Doherty tried to put it out in front but it's broken up by the fuel in the slot. Ood intercepts in the left wing boards, taken back by Spencer Watson on the back check for the fuel. And he'll outlet to Lee, gains center red, fires it into the right wing corner. Takes a lively carom off the boards as the fuel are in the midst of a change. Ortiz skates it up and out to neutral ice. Across the red line, across the blue line, Ortiz left circle, shoots wide. Comes all the way out to the point where Hutchison holds it in. And he'll send it through both corners. Teixeira sends it right back from whence it came. Over to the far side for Jordan Schneider. It's raked off of his stick, squirts up to the point where Victor holds it in. Make that Stevens in behind the net. It comes. And Al Farrell looking for Watling. Broken up by the fuel nicely in the right wing circle. The backhand it to the wheeling line right to the tape of Yetman. He tries to feed it out in front for McKay. Not sure if that was a shot or a pass. It came all the way in on Dorio, who sticked to the side. Another shot from the point goes wide. And the rebound comes in behind the net. Up to the point, Teixeira. Over to the left side. Schneider shoots, save made. Rebound loose in the slot. And Cedric Lacroix with a turnaround shot. Didn't get much on it, but got it toward Dorio, who was able to make the save and cover up. And we have a little bit of pushing and shoving again after the whistle. Just meeting number two of 13 between these two teams this season, but... A few of these guys played against each other last year when they played each other 20 times, and you can tell that uh, there's still some uh, hostile feelings. And 14 and 15 for the Indy Fuel. Cedric Lacroix, Riley McKay mixing it up a little bit. The net front, that's what you like to see from those guys. Playing on the third line tonight with Chad Yetman, and again, some pressure in the offensive zone. Back to the point shot towards the net and make a little chaos at the net front. Riley McKay, no, no stranger to chaos, the guy who led the Western Hockey League in penalty minutes for two seasons back when he was playing junior hockey. Fuel gain the zone. Tommy Apap shoots from the top of the right wing circle of the glove save made by Dorio. And now we have some more pushing and shoving. Bobby Hampton is involved for wheeling over in the far corner. And the linesman trying to separate him and one of the fuel players that looks like it's uh, Seamus Malone. And cooler heads eventually prevail. And now the faceoff is going to come out to the neutral zone. And the reason why that's the case is because both Indy Fuel defensemen came below the tops of the circles. They join the skirmish down low. And when your defensemen do that, you're going to lose the offensive zone draw. 
It was both Laguerrier and Parcells that came down to join in the fun. And the faceoff will come out to the neutral zone. The fuel on the last six shots in this game. They win the neutral zone, draw, dump it in. Took a crazy carom off the corner boards. But Adam Smith was able to get it away from C.J. Ike and clear it out to center eventually. Puck loose along the near boards. And Liam Folks hops on it. Brings it into the right wing circle. Tried to curl and drag toward the middle, but the puck wouldn't settle down on him. And Hampton picks it off and brings it the other way for Wheeling. Tyler Drevich at the fuel line. Sends it all the way across. The Almost fuel too, many, too men. many men call as Wheeling was in the midst of a change. And the puck got sent right to the bench. Here's Ortiz taking it to goal, aggressively coming out and making the save is Cale Morris. Liam Folks out to center, is separated from the puck. Hosinger takes it back for Wheeling. 7.45 to go, second period. The fuel lead 2 to 1. Buck backhanded into the fuel zone by McPherson. Morris sends it over to the near corner, but Ortiz holds it in at the point. Wrapped around to the far corner for Tyler Drevich. Sent in behind the net. Comes over to an open corner where Oud picks it up for Wheeling. Tried to go a little further along in the cycle. Broken up by the fuel. Cleared out to Spencer Watson at the point. And on second effort, the fuel able to clear it back to the Wheeling line where Cockrell comes back to get it. He takes a hit from Jared Thomas. The puck sits at the blue line. But one of the fuel players had crossed into the zone. That was Spencer Watson. And then the puck crossed in. So that's an offside. With 7-11 to go in the second period of the game, the fuel lead 2-1. Matt Alfaro got the scoring started at 2.40 of the first. Brent Gates answered at 5.20. And then Cliff Watson from Yetman and Lee at 37 seconds into the second period has given the fuel a 2-1 lead. Face off outside the wheeling line, controlled by the Nailers. Ortiz along the left wing board, skies it toward the slot in the fuel zone, comes all the way into the far corner. Cliff Watson sends it further along, but Doherty picks it off. Tried to center, but nobody was home. Sent in behind the net again by Ortiz, an AHL contracted player. Fuel intercept, play it into the wheeling zone. Ortiz stands up Riley McKay, and that allows McPherson to come back to get the puck. Ortiz back in his behind his own net loses the puck. Good forecheck and Indies. Chad Yetman tried to put it out in front for Riley McKay, but it was broken up by Wheeling. He will try a quick re-entry, but Yetman was offside, so he has to regroup. That allows Wheeling to gain possession with no resistance, and McPherson will settle it down. And wind up the breakout behind his own net as Jared Thomas comes in to flush him out. Up the near side, Nick Hutchison across center red, across the fuel line, one on four, is able to get past the D, takes it to goal, and fires butt. Cale Morris able to make the save and hold on with 6.05 to go in the second period. The fuel leading 2-1, to one. Nick Hutchison with a really nice move there. And he came with a ton of speed, Andrew, looking like cork out of a champagne bottle through the neutral zone and just really tough to handle for the Indy Fuel defense and a real nice stop there, too, at the end of the play by Cale Morris. Well on his angle. Great position in positional save. And a good rush from Nick Hutchison. Victor tries a shot for a wheeling and it gets deflected a couple of times, but the puck pops up in the air and Kill Morris able to make the glove save. He'll hold on for a whistle with six minutes to go in the second period. The fuel leading the wheeling nailers two to one. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBW Local 41 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. When you get care at Community Health Network, you're part of our community. And in our community, nothing should get between you and your health, not even the cost of care. When the time comes, our advocacy team will help you figure it out, whether you're uninsured or underinsured, so you can focus on what really matters, your health. Community Health Network. Exceptional care. Simply delivered. Get support at ecommunity.com slash simply delivered. Stand by me. Back to the action with Nick Golchek and Andrew Smith with Indy Fuel Hockey. Six minutes to go in the second period. The Indy Fuel leading the Wheeling Nailers 2-1. to one. 
Cliff Watson's second goal of the season and the second in as many nights, 37 seconds into the second period. In a four-on-four situation right now, the go-ahead goal for the fuel. As we return to action, the Wheeling Nailers will have a face-off in the left-wing circle in their offensive zone. Alfaro to take it, but Tommy Apap wins it from him. Teixeira turns it back over to Alfaro. He tried to center, but it didn't find a friendly stick. The fuel able to clear it back into the wheeling end. Liam Folks can't get past to check. The puck sit up along the near boards, picked off by Malone. Into the right wing corner, Seamus Malone turns to the forehand. Works it up the boards, drops it off for Teixeira, takes it into the right wing circle, ran into APAP, and ended up shooting it wide. Josh Victor for Wheeling, the defenseman back behind his own net for Alfaro. The fuel forecheck forces a turnover. They try to put it out in front, comes out to Teixeira. Center point, he fires one just wide. Into the right wing corner. Fuel with possession, APAP sends it around to Teixeira, the defenseman forward to the goal line. Loses possession to Alfaro, and he'll bring it the other way. 5.06 to go, second period. Alfaro sends it into the right wing corner, wheeling in a change. Jordan Schneider goes back to get the puck and turns it over. Watling back to Cockrell. He shoots from the right circle high. Smith pinches down to hold it in, sends it all the way around to Watling. Rink wide feed to the left side, back up top. Watling one timer goes wide from the right point. In behind the net, it comes into the left wing corner. And the fuel will try to chop it up to center and do. Back to the wheeling line where Matt Foley goes to get it. D to D to Adam Smith. Rink wide pass. Has it poked off a his stick nicely by Laguerrier. Was Hosinger, but the next layer from Wheeling is able to send it in. That was Bobby Hampton. The fuel quickly clear it back out. He'll play it in behind the wheeling net to Riley McKay. Ortiz takes the puck for the Nailers up the far side. They'll work it out through center. With numbers across the fuel line, rink wide pass comes for Hampton. He tries a sharp angle shot, fought off by Morris. The rebound just sitting in the slot. And finally, a fuel player was able to find it and clear it out of danger. Now they want to spring transition the other way. Yetman across the line, left circle to McKay. Look to center, hits a leg, comes to Jared Thomas. His shot is blocked from the top of the left wing circle. McPherson. Takes it the other way. His dump in hits a fuel body and it's cleared back to the wheeling line. Spencer Watson sidesteps a check to Brent Gates. Looks to center and scores! The fuel get a fortunate bounce as Brent Gates was looking for a far post feed and it deflected on the way in and beat Dario and the fuel lead it 3-1 to one on Brent Gates' second goal of the night. Well, some real good communication entering the zone between Spencer Watson and Brent Gates. Who's going to take it? Who's going to drive? Who's going to be an option? Watson allows Brent Gates to take control, and I think it goes off of Chris Ortiz, the wheeling nailer defenseman who went down to try and block that pass on the cross seam. Off of Ortiz and in behind Alex Dorio, completely unsuspecting for two at his bounce. For the Indy Fuel and Brent Gates rewarded with the goal. Two goal lead for Indy. Second goal of the night for Gates, number six on the year. The other way, Oud takes a shot right off the faceoff and Gail Morris makes the save. Chad Yetman, you know, hold on a second. It was Spencer Watson and Mike Lee with the assist, so Lee now with a 2.9 as well as he's got a pair of assists. So it's Gates from Spencer Watson and Lee at 16-27 of the second period, giving the fuel a 3-1 to one lead. And after you get the lead, that next goal is so important, and uh, now the fuel gives the opportunity to play with a multi-goal advantage. And think about how they scored it, Andrew, right off the rush. The quick transition play, catching the wheeling nailers off guard. And look, that's what happens when you try and make plays. Sometimes it goes off of a body and into the back of the net, and you can just see the reaction of Alex Dorio once he realized that the puck was in the back of the head, just kind of threw the head back, the shoulders drop, the palms go towards the ceiling. And a big-time goal for the Indy Fuel. Now they got a little bit of breathing room, but you can't stop now because you know the Wheeling Nailers are going to have a push at some point. See if they can find a way to get another one, make it four before the second period ends. 
Offensive zone faceoff coming after the fuel cleared it all the way down on Dorio. Faceoff won by APAP. Texera's shot from the point is blocked into the right wing corner. Foley's able to chop it as far as center. And Texera will hammer it back in. Dorio will stop for his defense. Adam Smith will wind up the breakout. Sends it back and now rink wide feed. A little too far for Smith and Seamus Malone will go get it. Wraps it around but it's held into the point by Foley. Puts it in the middle. Turnaround shot from the slot by Drevich on goal and Morris in perfect position to make the save. Traps the puck against his body with the glove and gets a whistle with 2.45 to go in the second period. The fuel leading 3-1. to one. That was a really good stop from Kale Morris. I mean, Tyler Drevich a turnaround shot and that easy for a goaltender to make the save as the player pretty much does a 180 in a matter of less than a second. Drevich facing his goaltender, quick turnaround shot, then faces Morris and lets it go. So a good positional stop and a reflex save by Kale Morris on not the easiest of stops that he's faced tonight. Drevich is not a big goal scorer, has just five goals in 88 ECHL games, but he's been really impressive. He's had a couple of really good chances tonight, including that one. Naylor's win the offensive zone draw. Nick Hutchison in behind the net looking for Alfaro. Comes to Watling. APAP tries to tie him up. Penalty coming on the fuel. And it's going to be on Cliff Watson. It was a coming together between himself and Matt Alfaro. They were battling at the net front. Puck went into the corner. And then Cliff a little bit too rough. And I think when he was trying to eliminate Matt Alfaro from the play, I think he got his right hand up, making contact with Alfaro's face. Almost like a, a punch with his hand still on his stick. So you love the fact of Cliff Watson trying to clear the net front area. Win battles down low, but a little bit too aggressive there. And with 2.25 to go in the second period, the Fuel's penalty kill will have to go back to work. Third penalty kill of the night for the Fuel. Wheeling is 0 for 2. And it's going to be a little bit harder too, Andrew, because Cliff Watson, one of your top penalty killing defensemen, all of a sudden now he's got to sit for two minutes. The key is winning that opening draw. The few will do that. Schneider goes across, and Malone clears it all the way down. Watson for roughing at 17:35 is the penalty. Naylor's Ortiz brings it up, fakes the delay play, and then tried to run it. He hit a leg, but it came to Oud across the fuel line, right down Main Street. Splits the D, feeds Hutchison who had an open side, but a diving play by Seamus Malone blocks the shot. Hutchison had an open net to shoot at and would have had one if it had not been for the heroics of Seamus Malone defensively. Ortiz over to the far side. Alfaro, right circle to Watling. Sends it low, now gets it back. Sends it up to Ortiz. To Ood. Steps in, left circle. Seam pass. Watling tried to send it back across the seam for Ood. It was behind him. Ortiz over to the far side. Watling back up to Ortiz. Center point. Wrist one through. Traffic save made. Rebound. And Morris got that one too. Ortiz center point. To Ood. Top of the left circle. Works it low. Hutchison tried to play it back up to Ortiz. It's picked off by the fuel. And Seamus Malone is going to skate into the zone. Take a hit. And stay on the puck. Malone punches it in behind the wheeling net. A tremendous job of penalty killing by Malone. And then C.J. Ike hops, hops on it. Finally forced free from him by Ortiz. And now Riley McKay in on the four check. Half a minute to go in the Wheeling power play. Less than a minute to go in the period. Riley McKay with a good stick forces it free from Hosinger. He has to go back into his own corner to get it. 20 seconds to go on the power play as Hutchison will wind it up. Across the fuel line up the left side. Into the left wing corner. Sends it back for Watling along the left wing boards. Watling takes it out to the point, but it's forced off of his stick by Laguerrier and all the way down. Oh, some more strong penalty killing from the Indy Fuel in their own zone, knowing when to pressure, pressuring up ice as well. That's the best penalty killing and another strong PK from the Indy Fuel. 20 seconds to go in the period. Cliff Watson's out of the box. The Fuel three for three on the kill. Drevich behind the net. Tries to put it out in front, but it's picked off by Indy. And the Fuel softly work it out to center. Feed it up the far side. Three on three across the line. Here's a shot right on goal from Brent Gates. Looking for the hat trick. But Dorio's in perfect position to make the save with that nailer logo right across his chest. And he holds on for a whistle. Well, how about this curl and drag play from Brent Gates entering the zone. Chris Ortiz sells out. He goes into the Superman chest to ice. Stick all the way extended. 
And then Brent Gates just pulls the puck back in towards his body, allows him to keep control as Ortiz went sliding by, and just not as accurate of a shot that Brent Gates was hoping for, but a highly skilled play and an offensive zone draw here for the fuel. Five seconds to go, Andrew. Plenty of time to try and run a play if Jared Thomas can win the draw. Doug Christensen was drawing something up on the bench. Jared Thomas wins the draw, but... Spencer Watson couldn't pull the trigger on it, and Wheeling was able to clear it out to center, and that'll do it for the second period. But the fuel out of pair is Cliff Watson and Brent Gates. Each tally goals in the middle frame to give the fuel a 3-1 to one lead going into the third period. Shots on goal in the period, 11 for the fuel for a total of 21, 13 for Wheeling for a total of 24. Our second intermission show comes up momentarily. We'll give you the scoring summary. Nick and I will recap the first 40 minutes of this game. And also, we'll bring you the ECHL Plays of the Week. That all comes up right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Hundreds of certified pre-owned Hondas are in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Like new Hondas for a fraction of the cost. Save thousands with 0.99% financing on certified pre-owned Accords, Civics, CRVs, and Pilots. And get a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty, 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. Search your local Honda dealer now. The proof tier 1 through 3 credit, 17 to 21 models. See dealer for financing details. Offer ends 1 Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBEW Local 481 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Second intermission of the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. The Indy Fuel lead the Wheeling Nailers 3-1. to one. As we take a look at the second period scoring summary, we were tied at one after one. Alfaro from Hutchison for Wheeling at 240. Gates from Texera for the fuel at 520. But in the second period, it took just 37 seconds with the team skating four aside for the fuel to take a two to one lead. Cliff Watson from the high slot from Chad Yetman and Mike Lee made it two to one. And then Brent Gates taking advantage of a fortunate bounce scored his second of the game, sixth of the year from Spencer Watson and Mike Lee at 16-27 of the second period to give the Fuel a 3-1 to one lead. The Fuel have yet to have a power play in this game. Wheeling was 0-2 for 2 in the period and 0, is now 0-3 for 3 for the game. And shots on goal are 24-21 in favor of Wheeling, including 13-11 in the period. Those are our second intermission stats. And Nick, if you're the Fuel, you liked the period, number one, because you got an early goal. Number two, obviously, you added to that. You got a fortunate bounce, but you get fortunate bounces when you play the game the right way. And the Fuel have done that largely in the second period, limited wheeling scoring chances, and were able to create a number of their own and, and obviously find the back of the net on a couple. And going into that second period, Andrew, the second period statistically, talking goals for, goals against this year, that was the worst period for the Indy Fuel. They were a minus six in terms of goal differential going into that second. Now, you get a couple of goals, that number's going to start shrinking. It's going to go from the negatives to the positives. So I think that in and of itself is a real positive part of that second period for the Indy Fuel. They're able to build off of how they ended the first. That's the thing that, that was most impressive for me. How good has the penalty killing been from goaltender on out? couple of stops for Kale Morris. Hasn't been tested a ton on the penalty kill and the power play against. But the fuel defensemen, the fuel penalty killing forwards have sold out. They've blocked shots. Seamus Malone, I thought, had a fantastic second period. And, yeah, he doesn't have any points. He's got three shots on goal. But I think he's been arguably the best Indy Fuel player just in terms of what he's done with the puck, what he's done on the penalty kill, what he's done away with the puck. He's just been a very impactful and influential player in every area of the game so far tonight for the Indy Fuel. So I think you look at the stats, you look at the eye test, a lot of good things to build off of in that second period. Yeah, and you mentioned especially the penalty killing, and we talked about him during the period. He hasn't shown up in the score sheet, but Seamus Malone is playing a tremendous game. I know you know Seamus pretty well. You've grown up playing together, and uh, 
he just does so many things well. He had an eight-game scoring streak snapped uh, in the last game uh, on Wednesday against Fort Wayne, but he's been scoring. He's been doing things, however, without the pocket, especially in the defensive zone, and just always seems to be in the right spot and plays with a lot of energy. Yeah, right. Coming into this game, one goal, seven assists, eight points in ten games, and a guy who's only got two penalty minutes on the year and for the style of hockey that he plays he's not afraid to go to the tough areas he's going to give it back to you after the whistle uh, for him only to have two penalties that, that's a great thing and considering the way that he chooses to play the game so i mean you want a guy like that on the ice you want him killing penalties and and might i add plenty of skill to be able to play on the power play as well which is where he we've seen him this year i think he's just the the epitome of a swiss army knife and be able to play in every situation and again it's the work away from the puck that's what impresses me most how he's able to support his teammates come back hard on the back check and provide some support for the, the defenseman and the goaltender stuff like that goes a long way and hopefully he can keep the uh, great pace that he's played with so far maybe create a little bit of offense in the third period let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard full night of games in the ECHL this is one of 12 games involving division teams Toledo all over Iowa four to nothing that game late in the second period Atlanta leads Cincinnati two to one midway through the second the Kalamazoo Wings will be here tomorrow night they trail Fort Wayne two to one after a period the other games in the league mainly Jacksonville three to two after two Newfoundland over Reading two to nothing midway through the third after two Greenville leads South Carolina two to nothing Trois Riviere over Worcester three to one that also in the second intermission and also tonight Tulsa leads Wichita one to nothing after one Rapid City and Allen Adirondack and Idaho and Kansas City and Utah all getting set to drop the puck the Rockford Icehawks tied with the Chicago Wolves two to two after a period Brett Connolly and Josiah Slavin with the goals for the Ice Hogs. And uh, old friend Josh Jacobs has a goal for the Chicago Wolves. Two games in the National Hockey League tonight. Both of them will start in just over an hour. The Jets are in Vancouver, and the Seattle Kraken hosts the Colorado Avalanche. Here, the Indy Fuel lead the Wheeling Nailers 3-1. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you top plays from around the ECHL with the ECHL Plays of the Week. That comes up right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Tonight's game is brought to you by the ECHL, celebrating its 34th season of affordable family entertainment. The ECHL would like to recognize the following league sponsors. AMI Graphics, official signage provider. Athletic Knit, official jersey supplier. Baron Rings, official championship ring supplier. BFL Canada Insurance and Sutton Special Risk, sponsors of the 2022 ECHL Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Flow Sports, the exclusive streaming provider of the ECHL. Geico, official auto insurance of the ECHL. The Fairley Group, official commercial insurance provider. Handbid, the official mobile auction app. Honigs, the official partner of the ECHL officiating team. Howie's Hockey Tape, official hockey tape and lace provider. In Glasgow, official puck provider. Migray Group, your source for game-worn jerseys. Sideline Swap, official online marketplace of the ECHL. And Warrior, exclusive on-ice equipment provider of the ECHL and title sponsor of the 2022 ECHL All-Star Classic. Catch all of the ECHL action live in high definition by logging on to flowhockey.tv. From across America's premier double-A hockey league, this is the ECHL Place of the Week. Of the week. High slot, slap shot, off the glove, and in! Now for the net, he scores! There's right there, right there! He's slipping out to the blue line, shot, score! Scott, he scores! He scores! He scores! He's the record book! It's a hat trick! He skates into the line, deep, shoots, and oh, Hello everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the ECHL Plays of the Week. I'm Colin Shuck, the voice of the Idaho Steelheads and your host as we look back at the week that was across the league. As the temperatures have dropped, the action is heating up as the first teams reach double-digit games. Entering the week in one of the warmer ECHL cities, Tyler Bird was returned to the Orlando Solar Bears from the Syracuse Crunch after signing an AHL contract just before opening night. 
In his Solar Bears debut last Tuesday, the forward wasted no time in making an impact. Parker battling here into the far corner, fending off Berzola, and now Sanchez takes over, bouncing puck back to the left point, retained by McLean. Tipped in front, they score! Welcome back, Birdman! It's Tyler Bird with his first of the season, and it gives Orlando a 2-0 lead off the tip of his stick play. That's Jesse Liebman on the Orlando Solar Bears broadcast network. The Solar Bears went on to win 3-2 that night, and Bird soared to five goals and two assists, not only for a share of the league scoring lead that week, but also took home ECHL Player of the Week honors for his efforts. Speaking of hot, the Norfolk Admirals were riding a four-game win streak into last Wednesday's game against the Reading Royals. After goals from Blake Murray and Sam Tebow in the third period to tie the game at three, the game would be decided in overtime, and it took just 17 seconds for Chase Lang to play hero for Norfolk. With space, here comes Chase, right side, and a shot, he scored! Just 17 seconds in overtime, Chase Lang beats Nagel 5-hole, and the Admirals come back once again. In four appearances in extra time this year, the Admirals are a perfect 4-0, which leads the ECHL. That was Wesson DeWitt with a call on the Admirals broadcast network. Maybe with the hottest stick of the weekend, Maine Mariners forward Louis Zerger Gossage put up a historic performance on Friday night in Portland against the Trois Rivières Lions. With the Mariners facing multiple three goal deficits throughout the game, Zerger Gossage single handedly led them back with three straight second period goals to tie the game at six. Already with four goals on the night, it was no surprise who would give Maine its first lead of the game in the third period. Moving. Back out of the zone, stays in the zone. Here's Brazo stealing, moving in. He put it at the post, following up and scoring is guess who? Lewis Zerner Gossage. Five in the game, four in a row, seven, six Mariners. That was Michael Keeley on the call. The Mariners would ultimately fall eight to seven in overtime in one of the wildest games in recent years. Serdar Gossett set a new single-game franchise record for Maine in both goals and points and became the 33rd player in ECHL history to net five goals in a game. He would then be loaned to AHL Tucson just three days later. The Iowa Heartlanders continue to build their fan base in a market that has never had hockey before. The fans in Coralville, Iowa City have been treated to some exciting home moments, including this strike from forward Chris Bennett on Friday. Here's David Fine on the Iowa Heartlanders broadcast network. Giveaway at net front, Heartlanders, two on two. Now a two on one through center, shorthanded. Misley looking net front, score! Oh, it's Chris Bennett! And that's the first shorthanded goal in Iowa Heartlanders history. Bennett is second of the night. A minute left in the second. The Heartlanders regain the lead, four to three. Bennett was named team captain just the day before this goal, which proved to be the game winner over Indy in a 5-3 win. The Idaho Steelheads closed out a six-game road trip spanning 12 days with a three-game set in Rapid City last week. The Steelheads earned a hearty 4-1 win on Wednesday that was followed up on Friday with a strong start. Fifth-year forward Will Merchant has been lighting the lamp frequently as of late, and it's no surprise he continued that with the opening tally. Versteen lost his tweet, gets it back in the middle of a scrum, puck comes free, Coda tries to get it up, but the Steel has taken away, now they have numbers leading in. Merchant, left wing side, up to Casey Johnson, shoots one save, rebound, scores! Will Merchant on the putback gets it past the netminder for his fifth goal of the year, and the Steel has take a 1-0 lead. That's me on 1350 KTIK, the ticket. Though the goal came in a losing effort, Merchant's strike was his fifth in seven games, and his assist the following night marked his first point streak of the year. The Steelheads open a six-game homestand this week. The Cincinnati Cyclones found themselves playing four games in five days, while subsequently playing seven contests in a 10-day stretch. The team hosted the defending Kelly Cup champion Fort Wayne Comets on Friday night inside Heritage Bank Center. And with Cincy down by two in the third, defenseman Nick Boca got the team back within one. Up to center, it's a loose puck that is found by Craggs now. Thought Bush was going to get there. Craggs got it to Caparuso. Now left side shot, they score! Nick Boca! 74 and White has been all over the ice tonight. And there, from the left circle, the righty shot, ripping one to the top of the net. 
the shutout bid for Yuri Patera is over, and with 5-10 to go, it's a one-goal game. Boca's goal marked his second on the year, though the Cyclones fell 2-1 to one against the Comets. Overall, the team did manage a 500-week going 2-2. Two and two. However, they'll be without three defensemen for this week due to multi-game suspensions as a result of their altercations with Wheeling the following night. That was a call by Andrew Mossbrooks on the Cyclones broadcast network. The Florida Everblades entered the third period on Saturday, trailing Greenville 4-2. But just 45 seconds apart, Florida scored twice to knot up the game, including this goal from defenseman Ben Masella. Jake McLaughlin at the half wall. Give and go on to Jake Jeremko. Jeremko lofts it to the midpoint shot, and they score! Ben Masella from a mile away. A power play strike knots up the game at 4-all. The Everblades went on to win 5-4, now sitting atop the South Division for the first time this season. That was Nick Rush on the Everblades Broadcast Network. And on Sunday afternoon, the Worcester Railers closed out a 3-3 weekend in Newfoundland. And Railers captain Jordan Lavelli Smotherman notched a pair of goals and a 5-3 loss, including this one to kick off their scoring. Here's Cam McGuire with the call on 98.9 Nash Icon, the Railers Radio Network. Colin Adams down the right wing side. Former product at North Dakota, the high side, Lavelli Smotherman shoots, scores! Railers tie it up, it's the captain, Jordan Lavalley Smotherman in the high slot to receive the pass from Nolan Vesey at the left circle, and Smotherman strikes with 16.50 to go in the second period. We're all tied at one. The 16th year pro is now tied for the team lead with three goals and is one shy of 50 in his ECHL career and just three points shy of 100 in 94 games heading into the week. That's all for this week's edition of the ECHL Plays of the Week. Make sure you catch all the ECHL action for your favorite team or across the league throughout the 2021-22 season by subscribing to Flow Hockey, the ECHL's exclusive streaming partner. From the City of Trees, this is Colin Shuck saying so long and good night from Boise. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. Getting set to begin the third period here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. The Indy Fuel leading the Wheeling Nailers 3-1. to one. Brent Gates with a pair of goals for the Fuel. He now has six on the year. And that gives him the team lead in scoring. Four of those goals have come in the Fuel's last three games. Cliff Watson, who has scored goals in back-to-back games, has the other goal. And Cliff is closing in on a milestone as he now has 97 points in his ECHL career and the former Kelly Cup champion defenseman as you mentioned has the family in town tonight and his go ahead goal off just a beautiful passing play on the four on four you've got a little bit of extra ice and the fuel took advantage they gained possession they found the open guy in a scoring area and Cliff Watson made no doubt about it to give the Fuel a 2-1 to one lead and we've seen this team they look very comfortable playing with the lead in part because and one thing Doug Christensen has said they haven't given up goals in their D-zone coverage much this year they've given up just five now three of those came a week and a half ago against Wheeling but they've given up just five goals in the defensive zone coverage all year it's mostly been off of the rush that they have allowed uh, that they've allowed goals. And when you play with a lead, you can keep the game in front of you and limit those rush chances. And I think you just have to keep up the aggressiveness that you played with in the prior period. And just because you're leading by two goals, what do they always say, Andrew? The worst lead in hockey is two goals. Now, if you keep your foot on the gas, you keep playing hard with and without the puck, you keep clearing your own zone, you clear the net front to allow Kale Morris to be able to see some putts. That's how you're going to see this game out because Wheeling is too good of a team collectively. They might not have any superstar studs that can really take the game over other than maybe Patrick Watling. But as a team, you can guarantee that they're going to come out with a push and the Fuel have to find a way to weather that, counter it with some aggressiveness of their own. The Fuel move from right to left as you picture this rink in your mind's eye in the third period wearing the red home sweaters. Designed by our good friend Mark Grainda. He did a nice job. He did a nice job. These are beautiful uniforms. 
And the uh, Nailers moving from left to right wearing white. And the Fuel win the draw, and Mike Lee sends it in behind the wheeling net. The goaltender fans on the outlet pass. The puck loose. Adam Smith gets to it for wheeling and is able to outlet to Watley. Maybe the numbers could be a little bit bigger, though, huh? <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> The uh, Nailers send it into the zone, batted down by Mike Lee. Stick handles pass to four checker, outlets to Liam Folks. He'll bring it up the left side, backhanded in behind the wheeling goal. Tommy Apap tries to get the inside position on Smith. It comes out to the point. Mike Lee holds it in. Trying to chop it forward to Folks, but it's picked off by wheeling. Alfaro the other way, looks to center for Watling, broken up nicely with a good back check by Seamus Malone. And Cliff Watson sends it ahead to Jared Thomas, deep into the wheeling end. Thomas... Beats a nailer to the puck behind the net in the left wing corner. Behind the goal for Gates, who has a pair of goals in this one. Back for Thomas. Out in front, Spencer Watson in front, just above the blue paint, and he missed it high. I think it might have been deflected off of a wheeling stick. But a great chance produced by Thomas and Gates working below the goal line and finding Spencer Watson in a prime scoring area. Yeah, Spencer was able to just find that little pocket, that soft space right out front, and it was Chris Ortiz, Andrew, that came across at the last second to be able to throw his stick in there and deny a shot on goal from Spencer Watson. I like my chances with Spencer in that spot. They give credit where it's due on a real nice defensive play, recovering back by Ortiz. And I just want to go back to a point that you had made earlier, Andrew, about Seamus Malone. Another great defensive play, breaking up a transition two-on-one with some support coming late for Wheeling. And he's just been at a whale of a game as Seamus Malone. Another tremendous defensive play coming back and denying a great Wheeling scoring chance. And he's been doing that all night. He's just had a tremendous two-way game. And the Nailers ice the puck, but they win the defensive zone draw. Tim Doherty to Hosinger. Rink wide feed to Oud across the fuel line. Back to Ozinger. Into the left wing corner. Behind the net. Tries a wraparound. Save made. And then Morris just absolutely robbed Doherty on the rebound coming across. He was able to flash out that right pad at the last second and kick it out. A heck of a stop from Cale Morris on a quick developing chance. Low to the low slot. Not first save, but a second save as well. And Cale Morris... Really hasn't been tested a ton in this game. I know Wheeling has more shots, 25-21 to 21 advantage, but there hasn't been a lot of grade-A opportunities. That one you could drop in that bucket and a big-time save with the right pad. The Fuel brought it in offside. They win the faceoff outside the Wheeling line. Jacob Laguerrier will send it in. And a big hit provided by Riley McKay in the corner, but the Nailers able to gain possession, get it as far as center red, where McKay skates back to take it. Cedric Lacroix backhands it in. He takes a hit from Stevens for his efforts. And Stevens was the one that got put on his rear end by Riley McKay. A little bit of redemption Stevens hoping for as he tried to give it to another Indy Fuel player. So it's a real physical play on this last shift. Parcells behind his own net to Laguerrier up the left side for the Fuel. Yetman tried to bunt it forward. It's broken up by the Nailers, and... Matt Foley has it in his own zone. D to D to Smith. He'll bring it across his own line. Poke check beautifully by Liam Folks. He brings it in up the right side. Shoot. Stick save made by Doria. Rebound hops up in the air. Folks hops on it on the left side, but his shot is blocked from a sharp angle. Cliff Watson holds it in at the line. Puck squirts free to the top of the left wing circle. Drevich gets there first. Backhands it up to the fuel line to Nick Hutchison. Good stick by Mike Lee. Forces it free. Hutchison is canceled out nicely by Folks that allows Lee to take the puck the fuel back into the wheeling zone McPherson in the far corner sends it forward but Lee is the next layer there trying to chop it toward the corner but the Nailer is able to intercept and play it back to the fuel lot that was a nice step up from Mike Lee also got some back checking and back support from Liam Folks and then they turn the page and go the other way in a quick transition not able to have anything happen from it in the transition game, but some real strong defending from the Indy Fuel D-man, Mike Lee. Some great support coming back from folks as well. Schneider breaks up Wheeling's rush. They re-enter the zone. Ortiz brings it into the corner. Fuel try to cycle it around, but Alfaro hops on it. Now to Hutchison, far boards. Thomas ties up Alfaro as Hutchison takes the puck, and we have a whistle. The puck did not appear to exit the zone. 
and the referee's arm stays down. So looks like maybe it did exit the zone. They're going to call offside. But well, Matt Alfaro hit the deck, Andrew, and he was just kind of laying there limp for five or six seconds. And so I think that's the trigger of why Jacob Rukucki decided to go ahead and blow the whistle, not knowing the severity of the injury, if Alfaro was hurt or not. Good to see that he's on his way back to the bench and takes a seat, getting some medical attention if need be. So I think that's why the whistle was blown. Rukucki erring on the side of caution. And it might break out in a couple of fisticuffs here. Drevich and McKay going at it here on the near side. Yeah, McKay and Drevich were jockeying for position on the neutralized faceoff. McKay kind of threw the hip into him to get his space a little aggressively, and Drevich took exception. And those two exchanged some pushes and shoves, and they're each going to sit for unsportsmanlike conduct for two minutes, so we'll skate for a side. Man, those watching a flow hockey, you can see those guys going at it, and that last good push from Drevich. You see that happen a lot where guys go at it off the faceoff, the wingers. We'll know, now we'll go down a little four-on-four four hockey. The Fuel have scored a goal four-on-four. Four. The go-ahead goal in this game, the Fuel lead three-to-one as a matter of fact. So they each sit for unsportsmanlike. McKay and Drevich, Doherty behind the Fuel net. Sends it to Oud, right circle, takes it to the backhand, now curls to the forehand as he works it up to the point, drops it off for Ortiz. Into the slot, McPherson's turnaround shot is bothered by Teixeira. That allows Schneider to take the puck, and he'll settle it down. Back diagonal to Teixeira at his own line. The fuel will get a change, and they uh, had five guys on the ice for quite a long time, but the linesmen were very generous in allowing them to complete that. Chad Getman brings it across the wheeling line. Right circle shoots high. And the carom off the end boards collected by Oud of Wheeling. He'll bring it across the line two on two. Dips the shoulder. Take it to the bottom of the circle. Have a shot deflected on goal. Morris was able to make the save with the adjustment and reached behind him to cover the puck and get a whistle. A scoring chance for Wheeling off the deflection, but Cale Morris tracked it well and was able to keep it out. Andrew, a very similar play to Brent Gates' second goal, where a pass across the crease hits off of an Indy Fuel defenseman and catches the goaltender completely off guard. Goalie's thinking the pass is going across. All of a sudden, hits off of his defenseman and almost catches him, leaving the near side post. So a heck of a desperation stop for Kale Morris to reach back with that left leg, squeeze the knees tight, not allow that puck to dribble past the goal line. Just a heck of a play from Kale Morris holding the uh, holding the blue paint and being a, using his reflexes to his advantage. The fuel will bring it the other way. Mike Lee shoots from the high slot on goal, forcing Dorio to make a stick save and hold on for a whistle and get an offensive zone draw. We've got 47 seconds remaining in the four on four. Fuel lead a three to one. The two go-ahead goals coming in the second period from Cliff Watson and Brent Gates. Gates has a pair of goals in this game. APAP wins a draw cleanly back to Mike Lee. Left point over to the far side. They send it back across for a one-timer from Cliff Watson on goal. But Dorio is able to make the save. That was not an easy one-timer either. Across your body on your strong side. All you had to do was just try and shovel it on the net. And he forces Dorio to make a save as that puck right along the ice. Nice activation again from Cliff Watson. Stevens fires a slap shot blocked very nicely by Tommy Apap, and that stung Apap. Buck comes rink-wide through the neutral zone. Brent Gates punches it into the wheeling end. Ten seconds to go on the four-on-four. Cockrell stood up at the center red line, allows Lacroix to take the puck after Laguerrier made the defensive play, and the Fuel send it in. Dorio leaves for his defense, and Ortiz takes a shot. The Fuel take the puck. Try to put it out in front for Yetman, but it's broken up. Ortiz's stick, Andrew, is stuck in the boards. Uh, here's a shot and a goal. The Fuel continued on the cycle. Chad Yetman won the puck below the goal line. Sent it out to the left wing circle. 
And Jacob Laguerrier hammers it home with a fuel lead of four to one. Again, taking advantage of the friendly boards. And this is the second time in two years that the fuel have scored a goal after a wheeling defenseman got his stick stuck in the end boards. It happened down on the other end last year. And this time, it allows the fuel to maintain possession of the cycle. And Laguerrier does not miss from the left faceoff dot. His second goal of the year. And the fuel lead of 4-1. to one. And I wish we could get a replay that goes back a little further as to how it happened, Andrew. But Ortiz was going into the corner to try and win a battle. The blade of the stick gets caught in the kick plate, which is the yellow part of the boards at the very base of where the boards meets the ice. And it's right at the door where the wheeling nailers come in and out of their dressing room. The stick gets lodged and it looked to me like Ortiz ran into his stick once it got lodged into there and he was pretty much rendered helpless he was bent over the whole time for the next 10 or 15 seconds and the fuel were playing on a modified five on four and then they were able to go to work and just a picture perfect one-timer shot from jacob laguerrier so taking advantage of a little bit of fortune the friendly boards here at the indiana farmers coliseum and the fuel extend their lead Four to one. Laguerrier from Yetman at 540 of the third period is the goal. It's Laguerrier second as a member of the Fuel. Coming in his eighth game. And Chad Yetman's got another multi-point night. He now has four goals and nine assists in ten games. And this thing might get a little bit more chippy. And here's what I will say, Andrew. I think Jacob Rukucki has done a really nice job of managing this game. He has sent guys to the box when he's needed to. He's kicked centermen out there, and now we got a fight. Yep, Tommy Apap and Cam Hosinger were talking. They both got tossed out of the circle, and they dropped the gloves as soon as the puck went down. Apap trying to free the right as Hosinger takes Apap's helmet off. Hosinger tries to land a couple of uppercuts. Apap still can't free the right hand. Those two are wrestling now. Apap gets in a punch. Hosinger tries to again, tries to get some leverage. Now Apap's got a little bit of leverage. Hosinger tries to dip the shoulder and then the linesmen step in. If the Nailers were attempting to kind of turn the momentum after giving up a goal off of the friendliness of the boards here at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum or unfriendliness and right away Hosinger and Apap were talking as they were going to take the draw the linesman tossed him out so they went over to the far side and you could tell that they were continuing to talk and Jacob Rakucki the referee was standing right behind them knowing that something was about to go down and obviously it did and just before this shift Andrew there was a little coming together between Cam Hosinger and Brent Gates. And Hosinger was trying to bait Brent Gates into a little bout like that. And then Tommy Apap says, no, you're not going to do that to Brent Gates. He comes out, sticks up for his teammate. And I love to see all the Indy Fuel players go and say good job to Tommy Apap for stepping up, engaging in the fisticuffs. As everybody came over once Apap got in the box and gave a little tap on the glass and said, way to go, good job. And that's the stuff that builds team chemistry. That's what builds mojo. As those guys will sit for five minutes each. And the fuel are on a power play because Tyler Drevich was given a penalty for unsportsmanlike and all of that as well. I think that came after the goal. And so... A minute 43 to go. This is the Fuel's first power play of the night. As Indy coming into the game, 7 of 42, 16.7% of the power play. Wheeling, 77.3% of the kill, 21st in the league. The Fuel send it into the wheeling zone. Jared Thomas stops it along the far boards. Indy leads it 4 to 1. 13.40 to go in the third period. Cedric Lacroix digs the puck free, tries a back diagonal to the point, but the defenseman had pinched in. It was Brent Gates playing the point, and he has to skate back to get it in his own zone. A minute five to go on the power play. Mike Lee will skate it up through the neutral zone, has it wandered off a his stick by Hutchison, but gains it back to Malone, left circle, trying to put it out in front for Lacroix, a little past him. Goes behind the net and is cleared back to the fuel line by Wheeling. 
Brent Gates will take the puck in his own zone, drop it back for his defenseman Mike Lee with 45 seconds to go on the power play. Lee will wind up the breakout, flushed out by Watling. Turnover forced, it's loose in the high slot. Watling has it bunted off of his stick, but gets it back, shoots. Glove save made by the goaltender Keel Morris on a dangerous shot from Watling. Fuel with possession, Liam Fultz through center. Up the far side, it comes to Lacroix across the line, left circle. Lacroix puts on the brakes, sends it across to Spencer Watson to Teixeira center point. Now to Yetman, left circle, back up top, Teixeira. Over to the far side, Spencer Watson fakes, sends it across for Yetman, but he caught it on his backhand and couldn't do anything with it. Teixeira with a left point, shoots, blocked in front. Careens over to Spencer Watson, right circle. Sends it back up top for Teixeira, hops over his stick as Drevich comes out of the box. The fuel 0 for 1 on the power play, and we'll get back to 5 aside with the fuel leading 4 to 1 with 12 10 to go in the third period. Wheeling scored the first goal. Indy has tallied the next four. Seamus Malone breaks up a play at the Wheeling line and fires it right back into the Nailers zone and behind the net. Riley McKay in on the four check as the Nailers start the breakout fully. A rink wide pass to Watling. Sends it into the fuel zone. Laguerrier, who has the latest goal of the game, goes back to get it. Plays it into the near corner, but as the Nailers tried to send it up to the point, Riley McKay steps in and picks it off. Malone. Into the left wing corner of the Wheeling end for C.J. Ike. Adam Smith wards him off of the puck. Bobby Hampton takes it for Wheeling. Ahead to Cockrell, broken up by Laguerrier at center red. Just chops it right back to the Wheeling line where Drevich comes back to get the puck. We'll send it back to the D with 11.20 to go in the third of the game. The Fuel lead 4-1. to one. Indy looking for its second consecutive victory and third consecutive on home ice. as Adam Smith will start the breakout behind his own net after Wheeling completes a change. And we'll set it up the near side. With speed comes Stevens through the neutral zone. Cross corner dump into the left wing corner. Liam Folks sees it, sends it around. Spencer Watson backhands it to the Wheeling line. Josh Victor goes back to get it with Thomas hunting the puck. Thomas forces it behind the net, takes it, tries to wrap around, and it's sticked up in the air and collected by the Nailers. Coming all the way across is Oud. He joined the Nailers a couple of days ago after a stint in the American Hockey League. Puck backhanded into the fuel zone. Morris will help it along to Lacroix. Backhands it up the far side. Spencer Watson, he's got Gates behind the D, but couldn't get the puck to him. Nick Hutchison did a nice job of back-checking and breaking that up. Yeah, Brent Gates able to get a little bit of space in behind Wheeling's defense and Spencer Watson I think just saw him a little bit too late the play was there the pass just wasn't made quick enough 4-1 Indy Fuel lead 10-17 to go in the third period we'll be right back remember Krista from Kemper Technology Consulting last year what's icing well she's learned a lot since then get him hit him again shoot and she's become a huge fuel fan go fuel Let the team at Kemper put that same enthusiasm to work for you. Specializing in accounting software support with QuickBooks Professional Certification, Kemper gives you real people solving real problems. They can also help your network infrastructure, too. Call 866-966-5633 or visit KemperTC.com. Come on, Rev! Idiot! When you get care at Community Health Network, you're part of our community. And in our community, nothing should get between you and your health, not even the cost of care. When the time comes, our advocacy team will help you figure it out, whether you're uninsured or underinsured, so you can focus on what really matters, your health. Community Health Network. Exceptional care. Simply delivered. Get support at ecommunity.com slash simply delivered. Stand by me. This is Indy Fuel Hockey with Nick Olchek and Andrew Smith. 10-17 to go in the third period. The Indy Fuel leading the Wheeling Nailers 4-1. And the Fuel went a defensive zone draws. We are back to action. The Nailers force it free. They try to feed Hutchison in the slot, but the puck hops off of his stick. The Fuel send it the other way. But Chad Yetman unable to win the race to the dot, so it's an icing call on Indy. 10-05 to go in period number three. Fuel with a three-goal lead. Brent Gates, a pair of goals. Cliff Watson and Jacob Laguerrier, each with a goal. And we talked to Doug Christensen before the game about getting scoring from the defense. And the Fuel have done that in this game. Two goals from the blue line. And Mike Lee has two assists. Texera has an assist as well. 
Naylor's win the offensive zone draw. They'll send it around to the near boards where uh, McKay wins the puck. Chops it out to center where Ortiz settles it down for Wheeling. McPherson ahead to Hutchison. Tips it into the fuel zone. Picked off by Mike Lee. Go D to D and then get it back. Liam Texera, this defense, or Liam Cliff Watson, excuse me, this defensive pairing. McKay across the line to Chad Yetman. His shot is deflected off of a leg out to center ice where the fuel settle it down. Texera ahead to Schneider across the wheeling line. Left circle shoot, stick save made by Doria. Ortiz hops on the puck, tries to get it to Oud in the far corner with Spencer Watson bothering him. He's able to outlet to Ortiz, will skate it through center. Across the fuel line. Sends it into the slot, and Watling maybe one too many passes as he tried to get it to Oud, but sent it behind him. Watling had the uh, puck in a pretty good scoring area, but elected to go to the weak side and try to find the open man. Ortiz back in his own zone. Corrals the puck. The fuel will peel off for a change with 8.53 to go on the third. The fuel leading by three. Ortiz at his own line. Headbands the fuel line for Oud. Poked off a hiss stick by Laguerrier. Back to the wheeling line where Smith comes back to take it. And C.J. Ike breaks that up. It comes over to the far board. Seamus Mullen battling for it and wins the puck across the wheeling line. One on four now, two on four. As he has some help from Folks. Sends it in behind the net for Folks. Chopped off a hiss stick. But the next layer wearing a red sweater tries to put it out in front. Broken up by Drevich. The puck drops back to the end boards where the Nailers clear it out to center. It comes to Doherty across the fuel line. But Parcells is able to force him off of the pocket outlet to Laguerrier, who chops it off the wall, out to center. Seamus Malone brings it in, two on one, but offside. The puck just wouldn't settle down on Malone as he tried to pick it up along the kick plate on the right wing boards right at the line. And as a result, because of that, he ended up entering the zone and the puck ended up following him a little bit later. So. Kind of a uh, unfortunate bounce, scuttles a potential two-on-one. Yeah, he was trying to gain control, and he reached back with that right skate. But the puck just kept continuing to bounce and roll on edge. And eventually the play was offside, and opportunity missed for the Indy Fuel. You can handle opportunities missed when you're up 4-1 yeah. with eight minutes to go in the game. But you always like to have the opportunities to add some more. Especially for Seamus Malone, right? For as well as he's played. He's done everything except find his way on the score sheet tonight. Absolutely. Naylor's ice the puck. And so, I, I want to go back, yeah. Andrew, to the point that you had made earlier about how influential the Indy Fuel defensemen have been. Of the 26 shots that says it on the, on the scoreboard here for the Indy Fuel, I've counted 12 have been for Fuel defensemen. So it's not just scoring, but getting pucks through to the net, jumping in the play. And, and most importantly, from constant pressure in the offensive zone, getting pucks through. They're not being blocked. It's not leading to odd man rushes the other way. And they're finding ways to make quick adjustments, walk the line, curl and drag, push and pull, however, whatever it takes for the Indy Field defenseman to be able to get those pucks to the net and give their forwards a chance to collect those rebounds. So look for those tips and redirects. So I think the fuel D from... The first period on have done just an awesome job of getting pucks to the net and making life at this as, as difficult as possible for Alex Dorio. The Fuel win the puck below the goal line. Chad Yetman tries to send it across in the wheel again. It's deflected up and out of play by Hosinger. So the Fuel will get an offensive zone faceoff with 7.35 to go in the game. Again, more hockey here tomorrow. It's pucks and paws night as the Kalamazoo Wings will make their first appearance in the Indiana Farmers Coliseum in a year and a half. And that will be the last of the six division teams that we haven't yet seen. The Fuel's first six home games all against different Central Division opponents. And the next Saturday, the Fort Wayne Comets will be here. Matter of fact, that will be the first of two consecutive visits by the Comets. They'll also be here on Wednesday, December 1st. Get your tickets at all Ticketmaster outlets, IndyFuelHockey.com, and the Indiana Farmers Coliseum box office. Naylor's win the draw in their own zone. Watling brings it into the zone. Poke check nicely by the fuel. Here comes Brent Gates across the wheeling line. Tried to send it across. Ood broke that up and takes the puck. Across center red, up the right side, across the fuel line. High slot. Ood trying to play it across to Hutchison. Gates 
back checking, is able to take the puck and intercepts. Gates behind his own net. Hutchison on the forecheck, forces it free, steals it in the left wing boards. Up to the point, Nick Hutchison cycles it in behind the net for Oud. And coming back, Cliff Watson gets to it. The uh, Nailers have pulled the goaltender. An aggressive goalie pull with 6.50 to go in the game. Down by three. Doherty with it, far side. Up to the point, McPherson shoots, deflected wide. Oud with it, left corner. The goaltender pulled for the Nailers. Over to Smith, one-timer on goal. And a glove save made by Morris. Back up to the point for Smith. To Watley. Back to Smith. Left circle. Shoot, save made. Rebound. Hutchison had an open side and put it wide. Hutchison again with a rebound. And Morris holds the near side post and makes the pad save. Six on five for Wheeling. Watling shoots. Deflected over the net. McPherson with it. Now in behind the net. It comes. And the Nailers still with it. Ood. Rink wide pass on the seam. Shot goes wide. Penalty coming on the fuel. Patrick Watling had the shot. It went wide, and Tim Doherty was going for the rebound and was cross-checked behind the net, so Wheeling did its fourth power play of the night. And this is a goalie pull maybe even Patrick Waugh would be uh, would be impressed by as the Nailers pull the goaltender with six and a half minutes to go in the game, and they'll get a timeout here to set it set things up. Rare that you have a TV timeout to set up your power play with a goalie pull, but that's exactly what's going to happen. We'll take a break. Final six minutes coming up after this. Fuel lead 4-1. Midwest Sport and Spine is the official chiropractor of the Indy Fuel. Go where the fuel go for sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Midwest Sport and Spine offers state-of-the-art technology, chiropractic physical therapy, athletic training, and massage therapy all under one roof. And yes, we take your insurance. Take advantage of our Fuel Fan discount for a $59 introductory massage offer. Midwest Sport and Spine, sports medicine for a pain-free everyday life. Go to MidwestSportAndSpineCenter.com to schedule your appointment now. Hi, this is Jeff Wheeler, business manager of IBW Local 41. I am proud to represent more than 3,000 union electrical workers in central Indiana. From Bankers Life Fieldhouse to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the annual Circle of Lights, we are proud to power your community. IBEW Local 481 is proud of our union membership and our community leadership. Back to Indy Fuel Hockey with Nick Olchek and Andrew Smith. Six minutes to go in the game. The Wheeling Nailers have pulled the goaltender. So they'll have a six-on-four power play as Cliff Watson sits for cross-checking. The Fuel lead four to one. And now if you're the Fuel here, you can ice the puck because you are shorthanded if you can get possession. Nailers shoot score or tease from the top of the left wing circle with a one-timer. As the Nailers won the draw, they worked it around to the open man and... Chris Ortiz scores his second goal of the season to cut the fuel lead to four to two, just nine seconds into the power play. Well, this is nothing short for cannon fire off the stick of Chris Ortiz as the Wheeling Nailers are able to work the puck from one side to the other with a rim pass around the boards. And Ortiz starts about a foot outside of the blue line, Andrew, and he just takes a couple of strides in. He's got plenty of momentum, and he beats... Kale Morris off the glove side post and in. An absolute blast. And now all of a sudden it's a two-goal hockey game with just under six minutes to go. The aggressive goalie pull works out for Wheeling as they draw a power play. And, and as a result, they uh, are able to score the goal. Naylor sent it into the fuel zone. And Nick Hutchison up to the point for Ortiz. Skates past the check, takes it to goal. Backhander toward goal, blocked by the fuel. Indy can't clear it out. McPherson holds it into the right point. Punches it past Malone along the boards. Schneider will lob it to the wheeling line. Folks is able to knock it free to Malone. He'll backhand it into the wheeling end. McPherson collects ahead to Ortiz. Tips it into the fuel zone with 5.17 to go in the game. Yetman will settle it down for the fuel, but lose it at the point to Cockrell. He'll put on the brakes. Left circle behind the net. Hausinger looks to center for Watling. Poked off of his stick nicely by the fuel. Here comes Riley McKay the other way. Two on three across the line. McKay left circle behind the wheeling net. Pops out the right side along the boards. 
Tried to chop it a little bit further, but Doherty broke that up, and Hosier came back to take the puck for the Nailers. 4.50 to go. Beautiful poke check at the line. Riley McKay, left circle, waits for some help. Protects the puck, sends it back to Cliff Watson. Steps in, and Stevens bothered him. The puck came into the left wing corner. Chopped over to the right, where Cockrell plays it up to the fuel line. And out to center, where Brent Gates comes off the bench and collects. Cliff Watson will tip it into the zone. Gates goes after it as the fuel complete a change. Gates delivers some punishment to Hosinger as the Nailers take the puck. Fan on the outlet pass, but it comes right back to Bobby Hampton. He'll lob one in toward goal. Kale Morris picks it up off the bounce and covers for a whistle. With 4.15 to go in the third period, the Fuel leading 4-2, and I think we're going to have an adjustment of the clock. As you notice, Nick, right away, the clock didn't start after the initial drop and probably was stuck for about 10 seconds, so... They're going to reset the clock here. Is there's always a backup timekeeper in the penalty box that's keeping the time on a stopwatch. Right. And Dennis Weber, our head of off-ice officials, is explaining that uh, to the linesman. Yeah, they're going to adjust it now. 3:55 to go in the third period. I saw you're right. Andrew was stuck for, on, on five minutes and 51 seconds for what seemed like forever, but was about 10 seconds. So. That'll help out the Indy Fuel a little bit, but now this is the all-important time of the game where you have to simplify. You need to get pucks out at your blue line, in at the opposition's blue line. You got to make sure you get it deep. No hope plays in your own zone. You got to be hard on pucks, and if you ice the puck, then you ice it. It's a lot better than continued pressure in your own zone. So the simplification of everything right now for the Indy Fuel is going to be paramount. That last goal for Wheeling Ortiz from Patrick Watling and Nick Hutchison. That's Hutchison with a two-assist game. Coming on the power play, the Fuel have now surrendered a power play goal in seven of their last eight games. Naylor's bring it into the zone. Hutchison stops the puck along the right wing boards, plays it toward the corner for Oud. Back up to Ortiz. To the point McPherson shot blocked into the far corner. Jordan Schneider chops it along the boards and comes back to him. Back hands it out to Folks. A nice play ahead. And the Fuel break it out to center. Malone one-on-one -on -one across the line. Tries to dangle to the middle, but the puck just hopped off of his stick. Tried to play it across for Lacroix. And the same. It hopped off of his stick to the inboards. Up to the point for Cliff Watson. Over to the far side. One-timer from Legarie on goal. Stick save made by Dorio. Lacroix back diagonal to Cliff Watson. Up to the point. Legarie fires high from the center point. 2.50 to go in the third period. The Fuel leading 4-2. Legarie forced back to his own line across to Cliff Watson and sent in behind the net by McKay. Sent further along, Chad Yetman hops on it, right wing corner. Tried to play it deeper, but it's picked off by Wheeling, and Ortiz turns it over. Chad Yetman sends it low, sent up to the point. Legarie fires a slap shot wide and hops to Cliff Watson. He shoots from along the left wing board, save made. Clearing attempt hits a couple of bodies and finally drops it. Ortiz escapes with 2.15 to go in the third. The Fuel will go for a change. Ortiz sends it to an open wing. Cockrell through the neutral zone with speed across the Fuel line. Broken up by Schneider. Spencer Watson will clear it to an open wing and back into the wheeling zone with a minute 59 to go. Dorio still in the net for now. Now here's a turnover. Apap shoots high. As they turn it over in the high slot to Tommy Apap. But he missed the net. In behind the net, it comes to Foley for the Nailers. Brent Gates in on the forecheck with 100 seconds to go. Doherty sends it into the fuel zone. Comes all the way through both corners. Collected by Thomas. Up the near side, Gates. The goaltender still in. Gates across the wheeling line. Left circle sends it across for Spencer Watson. He couldn't do much with it, but gets it out in front. Jared Thomas over to the far side. Gates looking for the hat trick, but it's blocked, and the Nailers are able to sky it out to center. The Nailers have been unable to pull the goaltender because the fuel continue to pour into the zone. A minute eight to go. Fuel lead four to two. Now here comes Dorio as Wheeling brings it into the zone. Ortiz centers, picked off by the fuel, sent to an open wing, but McPherson holds it in at the right point. Along the boards, chops it in behind the net for Oud. Left corner, up to the point, Drevich walking the line. Back to Oud, left circle, shoots wide. 
Drevich collects along the right wing board. Six attackers on for Wheeling. 42 seconds to go in the game. Hutchison tries a jam shot from below the goal line. Brought it up in front and tried to jam it in, but Morris Skate was holding the post. Makes the pad save and covers up for a whistle with 38.5 to go in the third period. The fuel leading 4-2. to two. Well, Right now it's all about bend, don't break, and it looks like there's going to be another timeout taken. Yeah, it's Wheeling's coach Derek Army in his first full season in Wheeling. He took over late in the year last year. And will draw something up. Wheeling already has scored an extra attacker goal in this game. They pulled the goaltender with six and a half minutes to go. Got a power play and scored nine seconds in on Chris Ortiz's second goal of the year. And yeah, now it's just keep the play in front of you and let your goalie see the puck and get possession when you get the opportunity. And you have to make sure that you clear the puck. That last entry into the zone, Andrew, by the Wheeling Nailers, Seamus Malone came back and he was in a perfect position in the high slot. He had the puck on his stick. He had plenty of time to be able to make a play. Tried to go off the glass and out. The puck stayed in. That's what allowed Wheeling to continue to go and create some offense. So anytime you have the puck on your stick, you have to find a way to get it out and love the personnel Doug Christensen is going with on the ice. Guys that are more than trustworthy and capable of seeing this game out. Tommy Apap to take the draw. There was a false start. Apap, Malone, and Yetman are the forwards. Schneider and Cliff Watson are the D. And Apap wins it cleanly to Cliff Watson. He's going to fire it toward the goal from his own, and it's score! Cliff Watson with a two-goal game as he took the draw, won cleanly by Tommy Apap, and fired it 195 feet down the ice, just inside the post of the empty wheeling net. The fuel lead at 5-2. to two. Well, the accuracy of Cliff Watson shot the last couple of games, Andrew's been amazing. I mean, he's just like he's a pure goal scorer now. Face off one by Tommy Apap. That's the key. Win it clean. Give your defenseman enough time to be able to send that puck all the way down and just a perfect shot. Center cut right in the middle of the net. And a real happy night for the Watson family as Cliff strikes twice. Second goal of the game, third of the season for Cliff Watson, and all of those goals have come in the last couple of games. And Tommy Apap with the assist and he led the Big Ten in face-offs the last couple of years at Michigan State. And you can see Doug Christensen puts him out for every important draw. And there, he won it cleanly back to Cliff Watson. And those face-off wins, you cannot discount the importance of those. And it definitely helped that he was on his strong side, his backhand side. And he wasn't going to try anything fancy. No tying up. Not trying to win it back with his skate. It was just the old-fashioned try and beat the other guy with quickness with reflexes a little bit of strength as well just a perfectly face off one via the textbook and Tommy Apap with a well deserved assist on that Watson goal after the fuel ice the puck wheeling takes a shot from the point and blocks the goaltender is off with 12 seconds to go in a three goal game Drevich up the far side to Ood gains the line tries to backhand it in behind the net Parcells wands off his man Drevich dive bombs low to get the puck the horn sounds and the Indy Fuel are victorious tonight as they knock off the Wheeling Nailers 5-2 to two. Cliff Watson and Brent Gates each score a pair of goals for the Fuel Jacob Laguerrier adds another and Cale Morris wins his second straight start stopping 31 of 33 shots and giving the Fuel their second consecutive victory and move the Fuel to three and two here on home ice as they beat the Wheeling Nailers five to two. Oh, a lot of different areas to like about the game tonight for the Indy Fuel. Penalty kill strong all night even though they gave up a PPG against late in the game. 
when they needed to defend, they defended well. A couple of strong games, defensemen, forwards. Kale Morris counted upon to make a couple of big-time stops as well. And now the Indy Fuel have won two in a row, Andrew. The home cooking is here. Starting to get a little bit of momentum. This is a big win in front of these great Indy Fuel fans. We'll await the announcement of the three stars as the Fuel knock off Wheeling 5-2 to two tonight. So the Fuel improved to 4-6-1. and one. Back-to-back wins after that winless road trip. Needed to build some momentum. And they did that Wednesday with a 1-0 victory over Fort Wayne. And now have knocked off Wheeling 5-2. And now have Kalamazoo coming in tomorrow. And it'll be the first time we see the K-Wings this season here. Got the announcement of the three stars coming. And the number three star, Seamus Malone is the third star. As Seamus didn't find his way on the score sheet, but he played such a tremendous game tonight in all three zones and he is our number three star our number two star will be mike lee who had a pair of assists in this game and really helped drive the offense from the point and tonight's number one star with a pair of goals brent gates as he got the fuel on the board to tie the game up at one in the first and then added one midway through the second a key insurance goal that turned out to be the game winner as the fuel win it five to two and brent gates we're in the alternate captain's a we'll talk to scott allen brent now with four goals in his last three games Brent Gates with Scott Allen with an assist to the sound effects guy. <laughs> As, He's a dog guy. Uh, absolutely. He's a dog guy. I love him already. <laughs> absolutely. The uh, Fuel win it 5-2 to two over the Wheeling Nailers. We will take a break and be back with a happy recap right after this. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. This is Dr. Ron Mulletti, Chief Physician Executive at Community Health Network. I know that for a lot of you, COVID-19 has changed your day-to-day lives in some pretty dramatic ways. But as things are progressing, there's one thing we sincerely hope you'll continue to do just as before, and that's to seek medical care when you need it. So please, focus on getting the care you need, and we'll focus on keeping you safe while you do. There's no safer place to be. Learn more at ecommunity.com. Stand by. Exceptional care, simply delivered. If you're looking for an exciting night of hockey, visit the Indiana Farmers Coliseum to help cheer our Indy Fuel to victory. If you're looking to score a great deal on business insurance, look no further than Indiana Farmers Insurance. The Indy Fuel chose Indiana Farmers Insurance because they wanted a local business that understands local business. It's a partnership that's truly worthy of a hat trick. To find an independent Indiana Farmers Insurance agent near you, visit indianafarmers.com. Don't miss a second of the action. This is Indy Fuel Hockey. For the final time from the Indiana Farmers Coliseum tonight, the Indy Fuel knock off the Wheeling Nailers 5-2 along with Nick Holchek. I'm Andrew Smith. Let's take a look at the scoring summary from this one. Wheeling got on the board first. Matt Alfaro from Nick Hutchison, 240 into the game, but that was answered. A beautiful deflection by Brent Gates, his fifth of the year from Keone Teixeira at 520 tied it at one. That's where we stood after a period. The Fuel took a two-goal lead into the second. Cliff Watson, 37 seconds in from Chad Yetman and Mike Lee on a four-on-four, made it 
two to one, and then Brent Gates made it three to one with his second of the game, sixth of the year from Spencer Watson to Mike Lee. A fortunate bounce off of a defenseman was able to beat Dorio and give the fuel that all important two goal lead going into the third. That would turn out to be the game winner as the fuel again getting a little bit of home cooking as wheeling defenseman Chris Ortiz's stick got stuck in the boards as he was going back for a puck. That allowed Chad Getman to win it for the fuel. He found Jacob Laguerrier in the left wing circle for a one-timer that Laguerrier hammered home for his second of the year. Laguerrier from Yetman at 540 made it 4-1 to one in the third period. On the power play with the goaltender pulled, Chris Ortiz from Patrick Watling and Nick Hutchison made it 4-2 to two at 1409 of the third with the fuel able to see it out from there and get the empty netter from Cliff Watson. Tommy Apap with the assist at 1926 to make it 5-2. to two. So Cliff Watson with a pair of goals. Brent Gates with a pair of goals. Chad Yetman and Mike Lee with two assists each. Keone Teixeira and Tommy Apap also with assists in this one. You get points out of four of your six defensemen. Uh, tonight, Nick Hutchison gets on the score sheet for Wheeling uh, with a pair of assists in his first game back at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum as a member of the visiting team. He uh, was an outstanding player for the Fuel last year, and you can see why... Uh, as he was really good. I thought the best player on the ice for Wheeling tonight. But the uh, the fuel, and again, we, we didn't mention it. And yours truly, I think, kind of lobbied for him to be part of the three-star. Seamus Mullen didn't get on the score sheet, but he really was good. And I thought one of the best players on the ice for the fuel tonight helped drive things, especially in the defensive zone. And then you're getting points from your defensemen. Brent Gates stays hot, and Cliff Watson finding a way uh, to score a couple of goals as well in coming in on the cycle, getting the puck in a shooting area, and then getting rewarded with the empty netter at the end of the game. Well, look, so much to like tonight for the Indy Fuel, and it was a bit of a rocky start. First five to seven or eight minutes of the first period was a little rough for the Fuel, but they found a way. They got their legs they started to take care of the puck a lot more in their own zone, and whenever you can get as much offense from the back end like they did in tonight's game, that, that's a special night for Indy Fuel defensemen. You laid it all out, Andrew. Two assists from Lee, pair of goals for Cliff Watson, Laguerre as well. I mean, look, you just you look up and down this box score in the stat sheet, and it's nothing but pluses, it's nothing but high numbers. And, of course, you got to talk about Seamus Malone. I, I think the perfect third star and I think it just goes to show, Andrew, that you don't always have to have points to be one of the most important and impressive players on the ice. Was he deserving of a goal or two? Yeah, absolutely. But sometimes it's just not going to go in for you or the, or the chances aren't going to materialize. The puck's not always going to bounce in your favor. Kind of like, remember that one play that went offside? The puck just was rolling on him. And, you know, maybe if it doesn't roll on him and it sits cleanly, he goes in on a two-on-one and either finds the back of the net or dishes it over for a goal. So, yeah, look, sometimes the puck's not going to go in. You're not going to be always putting up numbers on the stat sheet, but uh, arguably the best player for the Indy Fuel all night long, considering how good he was providing back pressure, back checking, playing with and without the puck, influential in the offensive zone as well. So you look up and down the uh, the roster, I think some real positive nights from a lot of these players. And, oh, by the way, a pretty strong night as well for Cale Morris. And you look, too, we talked to this, uh, talked about this to Doug Christensen before the game, but a lot of help coming from Rockford this season so far, and those guys are contributing. Riley McKay was big tonight. Chad Yetman, another two-point night. Now he's got 13 points in 10 games. Liam Folks is doing a lot of things, not just offensively, but I've liked his game in the defensive zone. He made a, a number of plays to break up rushes tonight. Obviously, Cliff Watson signs the contract with Rockford in the offseason and uh, contributes a couple of goals. Jacob Laguerrier with one. And uh, Kale Morris is uh, playing really well in net. And obviously, there's a log jam and goal in the Blackhawks, Ice Hogs, Fuel organization right now as there's seven goaltenders contracted to the Blackhawks and Ice Hogs. And so Kale Morris comes to Indy to get some games in where there's really not going to be as many opportunities with Malcolm Subban and Colin Delia and Rockford. And he is uh, making the most of that opportunity here in Indy to get a lot of games in and see a lot of pucks and is playing really, really well. Had the shutout on Wednesday, 31 saves tonight. And uh, the two that got by him 
were really uh, difficult or impossible to stop shots. And uh, and he's playing well and provided the goaltending the few will have needed, uh, especially here these last couple of games. And, and you can see why he was the top goaltender at Notre Dame uh, for three seasons, led them to the national championship game twice, and was the NCAA's goaltender of the year as a sophomore. Well, I would never dare try and look into the mindset or mentalities of goaltenders, Andrew, because they're kind of synonymously a little strange, a little weird, a little quirky from here to there. Nothing wrong with that at all. But, no, I, Kale Morris has been uh, has been a rock as of late. Now it was a little bit of a tough start, no question about it, but he has started to really find his game. And, and I think the mentality for him now is the puck, Looks a lot more like a beach ball than it does a golf ball right now. He's seeing it. He's getting some great support. And that back pressure that we talked about, the forwards coming back to help out their defensemen, Malone, Liam Folk, so you brought up a little bit earlier. I mean, these are the plays that make life so much easier on your defenseman, on your goaltender. So that way they don't have to make as many saves and clearing out the net front. They, they can see pucks a little bit easier and a little bit more frequently. So when you got a goaltender who's in the zone, like Kale Morris is, uh, that's a great thing. And he can string together a couple of good performances. Not sure if we're going to see him tomorrow. Maybe not, considering he would be playing three games in, what, four or five days. Uh, I know he's a workhorse. I know he would want to. Uh, but nonetheless, a great performance from him tonight. And another thing I just wanted to bring up, Andrew, Patrick Watling coming into this game, he had five points in his last three games. You couldn't find it with a search warrant tonight. Field did such a great job of any time he had the puck carrying it in the zone, in the offensive zone, the field shut him down. Multiple guys around him with good sticks, good physicality. I mean, he's their top guy. He's, you know, unless they get more players throughout the course of the year that are really impactful, he's going to be the guy. And, I mean, you look, 48 points in 51 games last year. That The stats speak for themselves. And, and he was absolutely invisible tonight. And the big reason is because of how well the field defended off the rush and in their own zone. Just a, a real strong game for them, and I think a lot of good things to build off of. And that was the guy who had a hat trick when these two teams played 10 days ago. And so tomorrow night, the Kalamazoo Wings are in town. They are currently trailing Fort Wayne 3-1. to one. Their team scoring a lot of goals uh, right now. Also in the division, just a quick peek at the scoreboard, Cincinnati trails Atlanta 3-1 to one midway through the third. And also in the division, Iowa fell to Toledo Five to one tonight. Marcus Vela with a pair of goals for the Walleye, and that's just our quick peek at the Central Division out of town scoreboard. Here, the Fuel are victorious five to two over Wheeling, and that moves Indy to within one point of Kalamazoo and Wheeling, who are tied for fourth place. And all the teams immediately ahead of you have either lost or are losing right now, and so that's a uh, you know, that give the Fuel a chance to move up in the standings. We're not at the point in the year yet where we're standings watching but uh but with so many games in the division every two points really does matter and so partner tomorrow night the kalamazoo wings in town they're a a, a team scoring a lot of goals obviously put up seven on the fuel last saturday night indy's gonna come out wanting a little bit of uh revenge wanting to turn the tables on the k-wings uh, tomorrow night yeah, I'm expecting another good effort from the fuel. I'm expecting a, a a better start to the game as well. And I think you said it perfectly, Andrew. There's plenty of revenge to be had when a team puts up a touchdown and the extra point on you in the game. You want to come out and, and do the same to them. So it'll be a fun night. I'll bring some little cookies or whatever for the dogs <laughs> if they want to stop by the booth or whatever the case is. But looking forward to it. Always a pleasure. And uh Get some rest because tomorrow is going to be another good day. It is going to be a good day. We'll have the pups in here tomorrow night. It's Pucks and Paws night as the fuel take on the Kalamazoo Wings. want to thank, as always, Mark Granda and Casey McGaw, our outstanding PR team here with the Indy Fuel. Also, DJ Abasella, our good friend in Wheeling, for all of their work and helping us prepare for tonight's game. And want to thank you for listening as well. For Nick Olchek, I am Andrew Smith. Our final score again, the Indy Fuel 5, the Wheeling Nailers 2. This has been a presentation of...